Good evening, it's 7 o'clock, we have a quorum. We'll call the Planning Board meeting to order. First up for general information is Mark Donald. Good evening, um, I'm here to submit an application for a site plan review, um, special permit. Uh, we'll work on the aquifer and TDR and erosion control plan for 237 um, Russell Street, the existing Quality Inn Motel. They want to um, remodel it. Uh, Take down the old buildings, put in brand new buildings. It's a 70 unit place, and then we'll put in a new 70 unit place. Wow. <laughs> uh, I've got the plans. I don't know if you want to do a quick flip through them or just want to set them on the desk and flip through them. I'm going to want to um, display board if you want to flip through them very quickly. Yeah, let's, let's, let's do a quick review of what we're doing here so that we understand. That's, this is not a small project. Take up a lot of your time doing this. What's the total square footage in that, Mark? Uh, because it's three stories, we included the patio areas as your new regulations require. Um, it's only application, I forget the exact number, but 50, about 50, just over 50,000 50, square, 50, feet. square feet when you include all the stories and the outdoor uh, patio areas. Just a, just a correction, it's the roadway in. <coughs> roadway in, I'm sorry. And it's 80 units, and we're replacing it with 80, 80 units. I don't know if there's a good place to put it right here with the new setup that we have. Is it going to be the same uh, same brand? No, no, it'll be a different brand. Just a, a real quick uh, review. This is basically the plan that was approved and um, 2006, which was Russell Street driveway, uh, the, the um, existing two buildings here, three buildings actually, and parking area, we had a reserve parking in the rear. So that's what we approved. Um, and we're starting out with a brand new project. Again, location-wise, uh, Russell Street, um, Spruce Hill, and this is the existing site, existing buildings. And we're proposing to, uh, this is existing, again, the existing site, existing pavement, existing buildings. I'll just go through it real quick because we're just doing the application submission. But just to show you the, uh, the new layout, um, the existing buildings will be removed. Uh, proposing two brand new buildings in this location. They will be connected together. Or oh, different orientation. Pardon? Different orientation. Absolutely. The existing buildings are essentially this way. Right. And now okay. we're putting a U-shaped building this way. We need to do that to um, accommodate the parking, setback requirements, et cetera. Um, we will have reserve parking in the back. So the so same park. reserve parking as before? Right, basically okay. the same locations that we had previously. Okay. Um, so that's, that's a real quick scenario. Uh, we do have, um, we get into architecturals, outdoor patio area here with a fire pit. Uh, there's a little lounging area here for there's an interior pool, and this would be a lot lounging area for people out there. There's a planter wall here to sort of separate the traffic from these locations. We do have planted islands. I know that uh, that's always important for you guys. We have plantings along the, the street trees as, as well. Um, How many stories, Mark? It's three stories, uh, which is allowed in the zone. Again, these are more detailed architecture, I mean, uh, engineering drawings regarding the drainage, which we propose to obviously comply with it, the grading plan. I want to sort of get to the architecturals to give you a feel for what the building looks like. Again, more engineering details, uh, construction details, all these are in, included in the plans because this is an application I want to have an opportunity. This is our open space and um, reserve parking calculations. We're showing the parking bays color one way. The uh, reserve parking another way, the, the dark shaded areas are the open space that you're going to provide, and then the, the white places are the wetland or buildings which we can't count as open space. Um, based upon the calculations, we will need some TDR applications for the project. project. Um, again, architecturally, um, again, I'm not an architect, but these are sort of the plan views and elevations of the building. Um, the architect can go into greater detail about what they look like. So I think we've supplied uh, what's required for the submission. One thing we don't have, there's a couple things I don't have in the submission, which we'll have between now and the next hearing. 
I don't have a lighting plan, which we'll obviously get to you in time. Um, we don't have the front set back the front uh, main sign, which we will submit to you, which makes sure it's in conformance with the uh, regulations. And we need to dig one test pit to confirm the groundwater uh, and soil conditions. We had test pits from 1960 to 2006, but current uh, DEP regulations require us to do a new one. So we will have that prior to submitting to the Conservation Commission. So, so the lower drawing is what we're going to see from Route 9, um, West Facade? Correct. Um, no. So it's West Facade. Uh, that's a north no. facade, north facade, no, no, that's right, right, north facade. Oh, that's right. Yeah. You will see this. North facade, okay, right. yeah. This will you see. Okay. Yeah, yeah this is the this main entrance and drive off yeah. this location. And those buildings are going to set way back, huh? They'll set yeah, back. Yeah, it's, it's going to be it's much. Quite, 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 quite a tear down and rebuild. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Wow. Because, you know, this is two story building, rooms are very really small, mm -hmm. small good French air will give us a French air. Okay. Well, the other part of it is the building life is getting to the point. One of the buildings is not sprinklered whatsoever. It's a it's safety all, issue also, it's you know. Oh, okay. Issue. So there's a whole lot of little things that if you put it in there, it's going to. This is this is a better way. Yeah, yeah, this is a better way of doing it for the life okay. of the building too. Nice inside, you got a indoor swimming pool. It's nice. Okay. Now, how soon do you want the hearing? As soon as possible. As soon as possible. Yeah. Okay. I would just wonder if you want to put it up because you, you seem like you got a lot of details that we need to get yet. Who's doing the engineering review? Uh, we haven't gotten one yet, so that was a question. Do you need an engineering review, and we can arrange that? Yeah, I think we should because yeah. it's, it's it's there's so much new stuff there. You are making more. I mean, it's, it's 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 different, but it's the same. So we, we should cover. We should do it. Yes. Great. Okay. So we need to get a peer review engineer, get him on board, have that done. Um, okay. We could schedule it for April six. We could do it for April sixteenth if you're going to be ready. Uh, no. We're ready. No. I don't know. The peer review will be ready. We have. We're already. Here. Oh, that's right. Oh, my goodness. So, May 21. May, May, May 21. <laughs> well, two weeks we can't do. I'm, I'm thinking right. this is March yet, but I'm, I'm wrong. This is, we this we is have to go through ConCom yet, too. We are within the buffer zone of the, of the uh, wetlands, so we are going to go through the buffer zone. Okay. Well. And the, the, the first meeting is May. The first meetings of the month, especially the first one in May, where you reserve it for PBPC. We have an, uh, a, a, lot of, a lot to cover with them on the new MS4 and some other things. Okay. So May 21. May 21st. That's six weeks away. Right. We'll, def we'll definitely be ready. Um, okay. We will get a peer review and um, those two minor. Uh, so you are we are we calling this a town place area project? Uh, yeah. yeah, you can call yeah. it that. Okay. We can get Marriott points here now. Huh? Well, actually, what, what is your time frame like from start to completion on that? Is so, there any kind of estimate for that? So, from when we start demoing it, from once the building right, down, right, it's probably saying that 14 months, 14, 15 months around there. Yeah. From once it's demoed and cleared, when it's set to open. I know we get it to them in the hearing process, but I am. Also requesting a waiver from some of the um, submission requirements regarding traffic impacts associated because we're essentially replacing it with the same use, same traffic, same number of rooms. So we'd like to have the board consider that with request for a waiver for submission. Nine sets of plans here. I talked to you earlier, Bill. Um, you need to distribute seven. I assume you wanted one for your records, and then we'll have one left for submission to the uh, we, we only, yeah, if you give us seven, seven is fine. So you'll have 
you keep one to give to the town clerk when you go to apply the, the fee. You don't need one for your records. But well, that'll that we'll have six and one will be seven, so you take the ninth one with you, so you can give it to the town clerk. Okay. Right. We'll, we'll take the ninth one with us. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Where are we gonna unroll these at? Just give them to me. Yeah. Right. Put them right here. <coughs> okay. Next up is Dave Robinson. Mr. Chairman, <coughs> yes. before you start with the next one, I'd like to ask oh. why, oh, I why is there a police officer at this meeting? Who requested it and who's paying for it? Are you asking me, Mr. Michkowski? Absolutely. Contact the police department. I would speak to the chief. I would speak to the lieutenant if I were you. Okay. You can't. Did someone <coughs> order you on this duty? They put it out, and I get assigned it, and I show up. That's kind of how it works. Why it went out? It goes out to admin staff. So the admin of the police department. I would call them tomorrow during business hours. Are you taking? Is this a special duty for you? Or is that, or does that take you off the patrol? No, nope, I. This is. I'm not on patrol. This is just. Extra, an extra assignment. But you're getting paid for by the town to be here. I would say so, yeah. Private pay? Say that again. Private pay? That I don't know. You don't know. Private over time. Okay. Like That's pretty tomorrow, interesting. Business hours, <coughs> they'll let you know. I'm sure they will. Did you order that, Mr. Chairman? I did not. You did not. Uh, Robinson? Mr. Robinson. Oh. Uh, my name is Dave Robinson, and uh, I'm here to uh, see what the feeling of the board would be uh, if we add a uh, sixth building to the Winfield project that's up by the town line. The uh, project is an existing project with five buildings, and uh, we're researching the possibility of adding a sixth building in this location here uh, that. Um, uh, has parking and everything uh, so adjacent to it. Add a sixth, you're not add, adding six buildings, you're nope. adding one more building, building one two building. to five, which okay. makes six. All right. How, how many units would be in it? Uh, Forty units. It would be one of these buildings right here. These two are the senior uh, estate buildings. There's okay. 40 units per building, and these are the families, and they are about 30. Two or three. Um, so this, this didn't you bring this before us before? Yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, this would be this, issue, this, this yeah. would be family housing. Uh, senior housing. Well, this would be senior housing. This, this would be senior equal to these two here because uh, it would be the um, the older people. The, the whole project is fifty-five and over now. I was at the. How much uh, would be low income? Uh, yes, um, I was at the uh, zoning board hearing before the holidays. Uh, to talk with them, and they had no problem at all. Suggested that they come over here and talk to you fellows. Okay. Well, you're outside the senior housing overlay district. Now that we comply with the unit, you'd have to get a variance from the, from the zoning board of appeals to, to put senior housing over here. Okay. Because you're the, the senior housing overlay district right now is from the bridge to the bike path crossing. Nine. Are we talking about the same thing? Are we talking 55 and older housing? This is 55 and this is yeah. you just said it's 55 yeah, and over. 55 and over. 55 okay. and over. Right. Okay. So you're outside of the senior housing overlay district, so you okay. need a variance of the Board of Appeals to add it over there. Oh. Okay. okay. All right. And you'd need to comply with the uh, uh, inclusionary zoning bylaw in that you'd have to put in I forgot the exact count. So many units of affordable for the 40. Yes, the, it would be four of the 40. Four of the 40 would be affordable? Yes. Okay. That was from the zoning board also. 
Okay. You have no intention to increase those four numbers just for subsidized housing? No. 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 These would be rental units? Yes. Okay. And all the whole oh, the whole thing is rental. Right yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you probably know this, but uh, you probably don't meet the legal requirements for getting a variance. Whether the ZBA would give you one and anyone would appeal is another story. But you don't have any hardship mm -hmm. uh, or anything unusual about the lot. This went in on a comprehensive permit. Yes. Over oh. overriding zoning. Twenty years ago. Yeah. Yep. So it would not be allowed on its own mm -hmm. in Hadley. We don't allow multiple family dwellings. Um, so you oh, probably yeah. your, your first task is to find out how the ZBA feels about it because otherwise you get dead in the water. Yeah, that's right. You need. I'm sorry. You need two variances. You need one to expand the senior housing overlay to your area mm -hmm. and one to uh, override the uh, multiple family dwelling issue. Okay. I think they might be able to do that within the senior housing. If, right. If, yes. If you can get the senior housing. Right. Yeah. You can, uh, you, you, can, you, can, you can do it too for what you, but you, need to, but you still need t two changes to the, to the variance yeah. if you would. Basically you're looking for legal spot zoning. Right. Um, or blessed spot zoning. Yeah, I mean, you, you're, you're, or, well, kind of an expansion of the existing, so in a way, yeah. because it's already senior, so he kind of falls into a bit of a gray area. Yeah. Might be. How, how many affordable units do you have in, four. The, already, in the thing that's already built? There would be four in the new building. What about the old building? The old building, uh, all of these are affordable, and half of these are affordable. When is those contracts up on those that they? Uh, I'm not sure. It's, uh, yeah, it, it's measured in decades. I believe. The these are uh, don't have an expiration date on them. They don't. I don't think so. No, I don't. So, think so, so is it greater than ten percent that you have for yeah. affordable there now? Oh, oh yeah, it's more even seventy percent. Yeah, yeah. So well, from our point of view, we have thirteen percent of our housing units are affordable. Yeah. So he would not qualify. Well, he knows that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So, but but he's he's ex he's expanding. The existing, so he's complying with the inclusionary zoning bylaw. <coughs> um, Is there any way, Jim, that because we were facing to lose this with 40B for the we're 13 percent, but we talked about this before, we're going to be losing this. Is there any way a project like this or anyone like that could? make some kind of a deal with the town to step up and have affordable housing? He could offer to put more than the minimum affordable <laughs> units in there and that might or might not sway the, the project? Sway the ZBA. Yeah. Yeah. But, 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 you know, Bill, Bill's point was a good one, the fact that uh, you've got to have a lot of butters and uh, these butters did appeal the parking lot that was going in next door. So, yeah, but, uh, but I think the parking lot was appealed for a different reason. No, but the the number of people when you have to send the notices out. How many notices did you send out for that parking lot? Quite a few. Like thirty-five or forty people. So, so um, you know, talk to your council and have them review the zoning bylaw and what you want to do and they would probably be someone to give you further advice on this I would think because you know you, we, we told you about as much as without seeing more information that those those that's a that's a kind of a sky top view and what's required okay um, but what's your feeling about it as far as planning board I don't think we're against it at least I'm not against it okay okay I mean it's senior housing it's low impact you're meeting the affordable unit um, criteria um, if it went to the ZBA, um, I personally wouldn't have a problem going there for the rest of the board, depending how they feel. Mm -hmm. I, I have a concern about letting the district be expanded ad hoc. Okay. Um, I think if we're going to expand the district, we can talk about expanding the district and take it to town meeting. If we are just letting people go in for variances, um, then um, I, I don't think that's good planning. 
I could be persuaded otherwise. It may be a good place to put something like this mm -hmm. because it is already yeah, with that kind of housing. But that's my concept is that uh, that doing individual doing spot rezoning bothers me. Okay. I know I look at that and I, I see that if we could encourage more subsidized housing in there to protect the town, I certainly, I think it's a great place for this. It's off the beaten path that, yeah, yeah, you know, and it's yeah. it's a safe place for seniors and it just, yeah, it's existing a, people like it in there. Right, it's the right place there. I so. said I could be persuaded. Yes. All right. So, Mr. Sagrada, what do you, what's your Well, I, I think it is a stretch to, to qualify a large building like this with such a big impact to go to the zoning board of appeals it really should go to a town meeting i mean it's it's a dramatic zoning change that i think is beyond the scope of what a zba can offer okay i'm in, I'm in favor of it if you increase the number of affordable units and i think there's a perfect part of town for it yeah. Well, we're way over on what we have there already, way over the percentage. I know that, but we're, we're losing know. in other places, oh, so yeah, okay. somewhere we're going to make this up yeah. somewhere along the line. <clears throat> Doubling. We kind of got a mixed feeling. And not, not wholly against it, just some concerns about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, John. Yeah. Mr. Eiser. Okay, our plan on Shattuck Road, it's vacant land, so I have no address. It's the Tudor property. Which Tudor? Oh, the estate of. The estate of. The estate of Joe Tudor? Yes. Uh, no, this is Jim Jim Paul James. Uh, the estate of was. Is it a fence with that down there? So he got fused with here. Billy Tudor lived there. That's that new house that went up with no this landscaping. This is Shattuck Road. Wally's house is down here. Shattuck Road. Uh -huh. So is this, this the is north? Is that the this is the estate or this is it's not? In a, it's in this. In it's. They're trying Wally to settle the estate. That's all I know. Joe. Joe's over here. Joe's over here. Yeah. 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 Wally's up on top. That's right. Because I see. Well, he's, he's the personal representative. Yeah, and he's. I think he's trying to this. Lot one that I show is supposed to go to him, and the rest of it's going to get divided up. I don't know how. Who's he just so going the, to, Randy? So the, Jim Tudor. So, Jimmy Tudor. So you said we're separating this out of this. Correct. And with this, so we've got a five-acre lot, 231 feet of frontage, more than enough area to meet the. I mean, with to meet the bylaw, there is enough frontage left here and here. To satisfy the bylaw, so I'm not creating a a, a, a non-accessible piece of land, and, and this wraps around up there too. Yeah, so. it does. So, and what's going to happen with the rest of this? I don't know at this point. Okay. Mr. Brown, the Mr. So this is strictly not a proposed subdivision. No, it's just an A and R. Correct. Well, it's nothing now. Right. Really. Just a building lot.
Are you able to scan this after it's been signed? Yes. Can you do that and send send a scan of that so we don't have to rescan? Sure. Thank you. What the front of the baby? Two thirty one. Two thirty one. Yeah. Now on with the public hearings. First up, public hearing, we will go with the reopening of the public hearing on the North Hadley Garage, the exotic, what is that called? What exotic is it? auto. It is, it is a good exotic auto. Okay. Okay. I'll uh, uh, we'll continue to take notes. Okay, I'm here representing Paul. Uh, basically looking for a boat to raise the roof line four feet. Um, the lift is not operable as it is now. It does need a new new roof. Um, so looking for, like I said, a, a boat to for the roof line and any color change or anything they want to do with the property. Um, not changing the use, um, not increasing the footprint at all. Okay. <clears throat> do you, Tom, do you have a, a update plan? I'm sorry. Do you have an update on color plan for everybody? And do you have the original? I actually just have the one with the color that they would like okay. to draw. Do you have the original plan, what it looks like, so we yes. can compare both of them? That's actually existing. So what do we have for, what are you proposing? Basically tearing this entire roof off, um, raising the main structure 40 by 40 area, four feet, and installing a new roof on top of that. Um, Do you have a picture of what it's going to look like? Yeah. Yes. Are you stripping the old roof right off, Tom, or are you yes. overlaying it? Structurally, it, structurally where the, where the whole the truss is going to be Which one are you looking the at? The bottom one. No, not that one. That one. one. That one. That one. That's the, that's the one you presented in H. Yes. Okay. You got one right there, don't you? Yeah, that one's the blue one. This is the white one. Which one is he going for? The blue one? This, Which one this, are you this going for? This to do, be able to use the colors that day. This is the yeah. one that was mailed yeah. out to all the abutters. <clears throat> the which one without one, the color did Which well one the will, will the owner prefer to do? He would prefer to do the blue. Okay. <clears throat> Have the neighbors... Any neighbors here? Mm -hmm. Have you seen the, the different choices? No, they no. they were given. Okay. This was the choice that was mailed out to them because that was the one that that was the one that was mailed out to them. It was not mailed out. That one was not mailed out. That was a, this is another option. That tall column, they proposed that it could be blue. You don't have that in bigger format, do you? I do not. Okay. Well, I can pass it around so you yeah, want to see it. Put that in the back of the seat to be in the back. Mm. Let's take a look. The original one he came in was blue right here. Right. I got a copy That's of that. Right. Right. Now, the signage. 
So whatever was approved originally is, you know, that's staying or they need to come back for that. So you're um, looking for this design here? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. And uh, well, number I understand, one, I understand he wants Jim is hitting an excellent point. The, by raising this tower, and that's really, you're putting a sign above the roof line. Many people have come before us and they make a fake okay. facade and they put a sign up there. And our bylaw strictly says no sign above the roof line. Well, this wouldn't be any higher than the, you know, the peak of the roof. This? Correct. That's just, you know, part of the structure. No, it is, as far as I'm concerned, it's a, it's a facade for putting a sign up higher. Okay. So uh, that's, that's the little. And this is not Route 9. This is... <coughs> Yes, it's a limited business, but see, it's in a it's a residential area, and uh, I don't have any problem if this tower were removed and the color the way it is with this one sign. You've got two signs here, and uh, well, that's no, that, I won't carry on. No, that, that's fine. That's your opinion. Okay. I just have a question. Yes. Sure. In this picture. If you're looking, so this is like 47, right? And you're looking at it? Yes. Yep, There's right. no trees behind it. Correct. That's across the street. Correct. So if you're looking. Existing, so you're right, there is no trees. Right. So in here, it almost makes it look like it's not going to stand out as much because you've got something behind it. Yeah, but in this, oh, yeah. there's nothing behind it. This yeah. is like farmland, oh, right. farms. Yeah. There's you, no tree. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes, there's no trees behind. This is, this is, right, okay. We got the picture. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're right, it's not an adequate depiction. Right. My question is this, this, this plan that he does, everything adheres to our zoning. The color, the color schematic, it was picked out with the planning board for, for, uh, preservation of New England buildings, which is on file with the building inspector. Which, just, what, is it indigo, the color, what, what's the true color? It's, it's, the shade isn't going to be, you know, correct, but they did choose a color that is in the uh, historical color. Biloxi blue. Yeah, but. Biloxi blue, Mississippi? Yeah, <coughs> Mississippi, uh, that's not a New England color. But what but I'm. It, it, it doesn't matter, it's, it's in the, it's in the, the the choice of colors of the of the, of the color palette. Right, that, I'm not sure. It's that's it accepted. That is, that we is have. a color palette, Joe. That's, a color that's the color palette. palette. We have a specific palette. So that, that is the color palette. palette. <laughs> that is the color What's palette. What's the company name? It doesn't. Multiple companies make the same color palette. Okay. You can't. You can't use a company's color palette. You're going to be universal. So that Sherman Williams versus. Uh, um, Benjamin Moore and the rest, we can't say you can only use Sherman Williams paint. This comes okay, from Harry, the Harry Tim. Right, so he's got that many times. There's there's the There it is. That's what this came from, right? Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. Right. So this is the Biloxi blue. Yeah. Oh I know this <coughs> yeah. 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 That's that Harry Tim can have that. What what I really don't like it at this is if this is the colors that the planning board and this is for the society uh, preservation of New England buildings, and that's an allowable use, how would anybody out there like it if I come over and I'm gonna tell you I want your house purple? Well, a business. This oh. business was was established in 1946 with Lesco, and it ran right up to date running business. Yes. It's not a resident. And it was never a resident. That's the right. house was next door. But, right, but it's a pre-existing, non-conforming use. Mm -hmm. So the planning board has some jurisdiction to discuss colors and other yeah, things I about it. I wish that and, and color could be toned yes. down a little bit. I mean, this is a residential neighborhood. You don't need it. The people are going to know there's a garage there, okay? And so you don't need to have a color scheme to draw people in. They're going to know it's there. And it, it, it doesn't fit into the neighborhood, Jim. including the. Uh, yes, the, yes. Uh, they're open. The planning board is talking right now. Yeah. I have a question. Okay. Yes. Um, 
Wait, 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 you weren't recognized yet. We're still talking. No, no offense. No, no. Only the chairman can recognize you. We don't want to, I want to get the planning board discussion out so that we don't repeat and repeat up here. Everybody in the audience, the neighbors, we will give you certainly your chances. Don't, 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 don't take it as an offense, please. Okay. Okay. We have anything else? Yeah, I got a question about what is actually going to be done there. There's going to be detail in there. Okay, well, let, let's get to the, the, the design of the garage first. We'll get back to your question. Right. Okay. 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 So uh, my opinion is uh, the tower has to has to be removed and the sign is have to be removed. By how many times have people come in and they try to raise the facade of the building on Route Nine so they can put the signs up higher, and we do not allow that. So uh, and. I have no problem with raising the the roof, and the design looks wonderful. But I would remove the tower okay. and the, the size of course the it would be non-conforming. So does the tower exceed the peak of the roof? No. no. Then no, how can it, 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 how can if that they didn't exceed have the it? sign? If they didn't have the sign, that that's really the look that they want. Um, if they didn't have the sign, would that be acceptable in that location? <clears throat> and that 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 does not ex extend over the peak of the roof. No, no, sir. And that stays within the zone and bylaws of the 30-foot threshold. Right. Is that correct? The 35. So the if the they took the sign off the... Off what's the, the purpose of the tower? It's, you're asking, because the lift does not go adequately high, you want to raise it four feet. So you're going to raise the building four feet. Have no problem with it. The design is presented to look fine. This has nothing to do with uh, the necessity of raising the roof in order to accommodate for the lift. No, no. So it's, it's, it's strictly, a it's, a, it's, a, it's to grab somebody's attention. It has nothing to do with structure, so. But if, if, if you look at the original and you look at I think this is twice attractive than this. This looks like buildings that you would see in, uh, I don't know where, not around here. This thing is just like ancient. This is bringing it up. <coughs> and people modernize their homes. They might, people face lift, uh, lift all their uh, businesses all the time. So I certainly don't want to stand in a way and let a guy go backwards, not forwards. And everything complies with the zoning law. You know, just. Sir. Yes, sir. Come inside the audience. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm, I'm a neighbor in a butter, and uh, this particular neighbor also lives about three doors away. No wonder. Uh, from, the, from this side. Mm -hmm. And he likes that very strongly. Mm -hmm. um, my concern is that these colors and the tower itself will be lit by this, by this and it'll be a lit tower in the midst of these residential uh, homes. Um, and and we're show? concerned about that. He didn't have no things for There's lighting. no lighting here. No. Uh, no. We expect lighting to occur. Uh, okay. Okay. Good point. Yeah. But it's what the board uh, uh, approves. Yeah. If we don't approve it, it he can't do it. Okay. But I... Let's back up three steps. Let's back up three steps here. Lighting aside, assuming it's not going to be lit, and just the appearance of the the visual appearance. What do you think of that? Uh, we find the tower, the, especially a blue tower, to be very uh, out of place in that neighborhood. Okay. Um, uh, we found that the existing structure was, even though it was a an existing business was actually an asset to the local area, but the, the, <coughs> this structure and potentially this especially would have been really something we would object to. Okay, thank you. Build wire, I'm also in the butter. Um, we got a couple of problems. This originally came to the planning board <coughs> on an application for site plan approval and a representation that there would be no exterior alterations. And now less than Two months later, we're back with exterior alterations, which strikes me as a little bit of bait and switch. The um, 
This is a pre-existing non-conforming use. I spoke out earlier, I think you were overly generous with the applicant in giving him the number of cars he has there, considering that the prior owner, although he is licensed for more cars, was only doing one or two cars a month, and all inside. Um, and I'm also a little concerned that this you know, presentation, the a plan, a, a depiction was filed with the board. It was sent out with the notices, but the applicant's representative is here without anything of any real scale to show. I, I, I just don't think that this should go forward. It, this is too much of a change to the neighborhood. Admittedly, people got used to Lesko's garage, especially after they cleaned it up quite a lot compared to what it was previously. But it's an old style country garage. Um, it's at the very edge of the limited business district. And um, yeah, it's an old style building, but uh, nothing else up that way is, you know, the really business was supposed to be petering out up that way. That was the whole idea of changing it to limited business. So I'm, I'm opposed to the changes. If he wants to go in there with what he's got, uh, I can't believe that <coughs> he has to raise the roof. Is it the specific kind of lift he's putting in that he has to raise the roof for? The lift that's actually in there is in, in the uh, roof system now and it, it really can't use it. Yeah, well, it's, it's it, only was you. it was you. Right, right. right. But is, is, there any, is there anything that can be retrofitted in there without changing the structure as was originally represented to us? I'd like to talk to that. <coughs> I put a lift like we what are you doing? And you need that headroom for vans and all this other stuff to get it up. Because you have to work, what are you doing, transmissions? You have to work underneath it. Well, so then you take another six foot on top and then you should get Mr. 12 foot. Mr. Kachi, maybe, Mr. Michikoski, maybe he has to learn to work within the parameters he's got. He said he was not going to make exterior alterations. If that means he can't work on vans, so be it. If the lift was in there when he applied. Right. Yes, I believe so. Okay. Yes, it was. Then why didn't he say that at that time? I, I can't speak for that. I don't, I don't know. He probably didn't just measure that to see if that lift would work the way he wants it to work for all the vehicles. Vehicles, a lot of vehicles have changed today. Vans are changed, they're yeah. higher. Well, exotic, uh, foreign cars, exotic cars, he's not going to be working on vans. Well, of course they do, Mike. Uh, he works on everything. He actually mentioned to work on tractors in there. There's right. no way tractors going to Okay. Be Other comments from the audience? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Um, uh, I, uh, um, going to this, the discussion of the tower, when you look at the plans that that or the way the building used to be compared to the tower added on to the plans now. I wonder why can't if he needs that that extra four feet, if that's even if that's even accepted, um, why can't the roof line just continue straight up to where the top of the roof is without the tower, um, without an additional um, you know structure put in there, it's not functional. And um, it's just calling attention, you know, in another way, in a community that is a rural community, you know, um, on one of the oldest streets in town. So. Anybody else? Okay. All right. Um, just to come to my question about the detailing. Yeah. Um, I know uh, other garages in town have detailed wash cars and they would put a recovery manhole and a basin. It's, there's no place where this water's going to go and I, I, I wouldn't want to see someone's land of, of butter being polluted for something like whether it's residue off a car, residue off an engine. You know, and not captured because if you, I know, I think Steve Sinky on a, on River Drive Auto Body was required to put one in there, and then you gotta you gotta maintain that. You gotta get like uh, clean harbors, or somewhere they come in, they pump the 
take out, you got a receipt, everything is done so, and that's there's no pollution out of it. So, Do you that, that we, we've actually had a meeting um, the plumber, the plumbing inspector, electrical, electrical inspector, um, building, all of us had a, a site visit, and um, what he's doing isn't going to require that. Mm -hmm. um, so, so you won't be doing the, detail or washing or anything? It, the uh, oil separator, all that is not required for the upgrade because um, it's existing. No, no, no. no. no that's it not doesn't existing. matter. No, that is not a true statement. We have a zoning bylaw that says if you are doing this kind of work, zoning bylaw, we have two bylaws, a zoning bylaw and a regular bylaw. And if you're doing anything that could pollute, the general bylaw will right. override and say you shall comply. You, compl you are grandfathered under the zoning bylaw, but under the general bylaw, there's no grandfathering. So if you change your use, you must comply. Okay? And even though he's been here since, however, if he's doing detailing and there's a, a chance that he could be washing and polluting, like John said, that he probably needs to put in this uh, separating system. Okay. Okay. What, what that does, it just protects all the neighbors. And then you uh, run off, there goes mm -hmm. around, you go right down Russell Brook, now you got that in a book. So it just, it protects him, so no one would sue him, and it just everything. It protects right. everybody down the Right. What perhaps, I mean, not past, but it protects everybody for the present and future. So we would need to see a detailed plan of, of that and whether where it's going to be exiting the building and well, you, what you, kind you, of catch? They would need to come back with, with a plan for that okay. one, yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. So be known that we're going to require the separating system because he does do it. It's simply the right protection and the right thing to do. Okay. The MS4, even though he may or may not be complying with him, need to comply with MS4, there's a whole bunch of environmental stuff there that says you shall. Okay, it's it's <coughs> enough said. We're not going to get into that. I could remember stuff. 30 years ago when DEP visited every single garage in this town. Everyone was listed. Mine was one. I, according to the plumbing code and everything, I put drains in it. They made me cement everyone or face a fine. Or if you could prove if you had a recovery manhole there, then they would allow that. So that's all they're doing is protecting groundwater. A question to the neighbors in the background. Did I understand that if the tower were removed, the neighbors would support the elevation and the building as shown, uh, four feet, or would you rather see the old structure? I didn't, I didn't hear it. I, mean, I can't speak for everybody, um, but I would, I would definitely like to see the old structure uh, stay in place. Mm -hmm. um, but if the roof is going to be raised, I just don't see the, the necessity of the tower. I think that's, that's where we would get hung up on. Um, but so, and the lighting, but support, support. Well, is, is the current lighting of the building okay? There is now the lighting of the building. It's pretty dark. Yeah, so it's fine. Is it the current light? Whatever, the light whatever is, is or isn't there is is, is work, yeah, working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not. There's it's it's very okay. good. What are, what about the blue color? The yeah, not not a, a fan. Not a fan. Not a, yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. He's gonna. Yeah. Okay. This, this is I, I, I wouldn't have a problem of making a motion to remove that tower. Let him put that roof for the lift and change that to a white, which I think he said that he would agree to get this project through and come back with a detail on the, uh, that way you could start with your construction and come back with a detail on that recovery manhole. Okay. No, I, we've, we've tried things like that before but I think until we get the final drawing of what it's going to look like so the neighbors can see and we can have it for our records and we'll just continue the hearing that would be my opinion but with the full plan you can't see nothing the the, the recovery is all underground so there's well, nothing yeah, you can see it's uh, all okay no and, and, and so you can go back because we want to make sure that we don't give, you don't speak too much for your client. Correct. Okay. The planning board is requesting no tower, white facade, everything else on the building is fine. Okay. And then come back with a, with a design for the recovery manual. Did, did he ever come in with a lighting program? 
They did have an indication yeah. for lighting and probably should review it. Yeah, while we review it. Well, okay. it's going to lit. It is there going to be new lighting on this building? Or is it going to be what he's using today? We had, we haven't talked about that. I know okay. he's added. I know he he's added or fixed yeah. on there because there was a complaint the way it was designed. So he actually gave a cell to uh, an abutter that had a concern with it, and I and I believe is taking care of it whether shut it off or redirect it. Yeah, because um, I mean, I, know, I remember there was some issues that, and the neighbors talked to them directly, and I think they came to a resolution on the lighting, and... Yes, somebody got the hand. Yes. Yeah, just, um, I do know that when I reviewed the plans that were downstairs, it talks about, you know, how the green space is going to look around the corner uh, on 47 Cummins. Um, and if maybe we could get a more detailed plan of what that's going to look like as well, and see what kind of... Because I know we live right across the street, so maybe some type of you know green space with our Vida or a fence or something to kind of shield some of the cars. I think that would be something that would uh, we'd be interested to see. Okay. Well, we'll look out. Yes, sir. Um, if he has requested a certain number of cars, I would think it would be more realistic to show cars in that representation as well. If there are if if there are a number of cars that sh that are allowed to be outside the building on a consistent basis. Didn't yeah. he already quest request a number of cars? Wasn't that there? Yeah, let me see. All right, well, I'm just one of the realistic We already voted for Ten all that total already cars. Voted. We are reopening the hearing, and this is the, the risk that they take, John. When you yeah. reopen a hearing, yeah. we can go exactly. over the things that perhaps were not clear to the board or to the neighbors. Yeah. So Ten total cars. For sale and or waiting repairs not to exceed two and not and not to exceed two employee and four customer parking spaces. So that's a total of yeah, okay, ten ten cars sitting on the lot. And of course you've got some employees and customers. And then he the had side. a plan when he, he came here with yeah, that. Yeah, and that was but it was all supposed to be striped to show right. that. Yes. So you got the no tower, white. The one sign and the curry manhole. Okay. And any revised lighting plan if he wants any. Okay. Okay. And come back to us. We come back in two weeks. Can we be on the agenda for two weeks? Yes. Yeah. We'll yeah. Make Please. sure the landscape is shown too because it's reopened. We want we want to see a complete. Package. I believe that's on the original. Yeah. Plan. Yeah. yeah. Well, yes. we want to see. Okay. Okay. Since we we opened it, let's yeah. see everything at once because if you come back doing with this piecemeal is a waste of time. Cover on it, everything there. There's you no see. mistake. Yeah. If he um, can put the wait, if he wants to put external light on a sign, wait. you can do that. It can't um, be internal. You know, um, and show everything right there and so. Okay. Wait. And recovery manhole. Did you have no tower recovery manhole? And change lighting changes or and color. If, if, no, if lighting, lighting plan. Changes, lighting plan. Lighting plan. Color will not be white. Color. Okay. Alright that? Thank you. Okay, thank you. <coughs> and that's in two weeks. Oh wait a minute. Um what's the date? Tom. Yeah. Tom. Tom. Oh, Tom. Oh, yes, yes. Wait. Two Tom. three turns. Oh. Hey. Yeah. Tom. He was Tom. Back. Tom. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Too late. He ran. No, he didn't. <laughs> that'll be that'll be on the sixteenth in two weeks. Okay. Perfect. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we will take up the uh, marijuana bylaw right now. How many? Anybody here for the marijuana bylaw? Okay. Okay. We have been working on making a number of changes, well, amendments, whatever you want to call it, to the bylaw. The uh, bylaw was sent out to town council. So you want to announce this is public? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to read the public notice. Yes, this is the public hearing for the zoning bylaw. And I hope I bought a copy of it. I don't have to read it, but it's always nice when I do. And I probably didn't. I got too much paper. 
Anyways, okay. Planning board. Yeah. The planning board will hold a public hearing on zoning amendment to the Hadley zoning bylaw to amend section uh, three and section twenty nine of the zoning bylaw by uh, adding. Uh, adult use marijuana and creating a new section 30 adult use marijuana per the per the notice that appeared in the Gazette um, on the publication dates of March I believe it was March 4 and 11 yes okay I forgot to bring the public notice. It's probably sitting in a file someplace. There's so much paper on this marijuana bylaw. Anyway, um, the amendment as of around 2 5 was sent to town council on about 2 5. And they replied back on Friday afternoon at 5 o'clock. Bill and I received a notice of it, uh, what changes they had made. And they had made some changes that made sense. They asked us some questions. Um, the person that was recommending the changes was not Joel Bard. I believe it was a gentleman or a lady named, uh, uh, let's see if it's in here. I think it was Nicole, Nicole, Nicole from um, Constanzo. Constanzo. And some of the changes she re re recommended were contrary to changes that uh, KP Law had made when we put the zoning bylaw into the, what does it call the, the town directory? When we put all the bylaws into the town directory. Oh, the, the, uh, the online. Uh, the on online bylaw, whatever it is. And they have, she had made changes that were contrary to the changes that were made probably going to be, what, 10 years ago? No. Pretty much. We, we, well, yeah. At one point, we had a lot of little things in the bylaws. Sometimes it said bylaw, one word. Sometimes it said by hyphen law. Um, so we went to a big exercise of getting everything consistent everywhere. And uh, then this, this slipped. This slipped. Uh, this, she, this, this person goes through and recommends changing some of the wording back to what it used to be. So some of the changes, Bill and I had to take a little bit of a grain of salt in that that's not what we want. So And these are billable hours, correct? What billable hours? That's a joke. <laughs> legal, <laughs> legal billable hours. I would assume so. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there was a lot of clarifications that they made, which were good. And I incorporated um, over the weekend virtually all of the highly recommended or underlined corporate changes and then there was a few questions that uh, they raised and we had talked about and it's a good thing to quite just to try to clarify here in that in the definitions ceases to operate they had a question that conflicted the 60 day uh, under ceases to op we have a definition ceases to operate Marijuana retailer closes and does not transact business for a period greater than 60 days with no substantial action taken to reopen. And she's saying that that's a conflict with a section later in our bylaw where we say 365 days. And I know we talked about that um, at a couple of our meetings. And I was just talking to the last, I had email bill, we didn't have a chance to get back to each other. Do we want to change that? Do we want to leave the 260 and 365 the way they are? Is that in the paragraph that's referring to the growing of the marijuana, or is it the uh, retail See, the 60, is The 60 days is specific to the retailer. Oh. The 365 is for the marijuana establishment. Yeah, okay. there's got to be two different numbers, right? Well, I think the reason it's different numbers, I mean, we have to clarify it, is the way the 365 is worded such that the marijuana establishment ceases operation for 365 days and or the marijuana establishment's registration license by the Cannabis Control Commission expires or is terminated. What's the state statute say? Is there a termination date? I 
issue that's in my car. I, that, I don't know. So I think we could go with the 60 days for retail and 365 for, maybe we'll just say establishments other than retail. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that makes sense okay. because if you're growing a crop, you know, okay. 60 that's, days that's, over the that's, winter, that's good. they may not want to heat it. Of course, they're growing indoors, it doesn't matter, but well, well, maybe it, it does. They still won't do it. When you have to feed the, feed the okay. fires. Now okay. And then they had a, we had put words in there throughout, and I, if anybody printed out, they, they maybe didn't print it in color. There was a couple of uh, questions that I tried to cl clarify here. My, uh, my town meeting speech, which is, this is not a just say no scenario. Uh, if we do not adopt this bylaw, we will have no regulation of okay. adult use cannabis other than site plan approval. It will grow wherever the farmers want to plant it, consistent with state regulations. And it will be sold wherever people want to sell it, consistent with state regulations. So uh, this is not if you don't support cannabis, adult use cannabis, if you wanted to not have the town approve adult use cannabis, there is a completely different route that has to be taken, including two votes uh, to prohibit the sale, which is something South Hadley went through. We're committed to letting it be grown and letting it be sold. We're trying to put some reasonable regulations on it. Uh, so I'm asking everyone to support this because without this, it's the Wild West. Yeah. Under I, I know. I, I had a lot of people talk. To, I'm, I don't want it. I don't. I says it's not. It was voted already with town meeting. And if you don't, then you're not going to like what's going to happen. So. Under section 30.4.5.7, which is about on page 9, depending how your printer printed it out. We put in there um, at the recommendation of both people when we had our hearings and at, at the planning board. Um, we had really put in, if no complaints, we put no valid complaints. And <coughs> town council re replied back that that is way too much of an open statement. What does it mean? It's open to interpretation, a lot of other things. So I tried to clarify that. And I wrote in red, if anybody printed it in red, if not, you would probably in a different color on your form anyway. If no non-conformances have been confirmed by either the zoning enforcement officer and or the police chief to this bylaw have been received after two successive left that words in trying to use that instead of valid complaints trying to define nine non-conformances and who would determine the non-conformance would either be the police chief or probably the police department uh, and the zoning enforcement officer I gotta add a few more words in there but that's the general sense that I'm trying to get to to define what a even you know what a valid complaint or a non-conformance okay so it's trying to succinct it to this and then under 30.5.5 um, about again the bottom of page 9 the top of page 10 again depending how you put it out that uh, I added in red at the end of that 30.5.5 that uh, uh, security measures. They recommended that we not, the planning board, not accept any, sec require any security measure to be submitted to the planning board because it's an open record to anybody who wants to see it. And even if it's fairly general, it could give somebody too much detail. So I tried to be a bit more defined in that and saying that the security and fencing issue shall be submitted in confidence to the police chief and fire chief for their approval. The police chief and fire chief shall reply to the planning board within 30 days of submission their approval or disapproval of the proposed plans. That way we never see the fire, because there is, depending on the building, there's going to be fire at two, and that could be tied in with the security system. The planning board doesn't, we don't care what you have for security system, as long as it meets 
the bylaw and the state regulation. We don't need details because we're not going to ever do anything with it. We simply want to know that they have approved it. I keep pointing my because I have one here. So, so, so do we but, even need to go that far? Um, I'm just thinking that it could still be a pub subject to a public records request with the uh, police department or the fire department. Um, I'm happy just going with com that it must be compliant with state regulations. That's We're not asking for anything above state regulations. <coughs> okay, so. But how would, how would our police and fire see that? I mean. That's not their job. They're, they're, jo they're not responsible for determining compliance with state regulations. The Cannabis Control Commission is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if there's something specific to where is where the sprinkler is going to go, something like that, the fire department's on it. But so if the state does that, anybody can get a copy of that from the public re records report? Probably not. There is an exception for, there, there are some exceptions, and I think the Cannabis Control Commission probably would, would assert those. There are exceptions for security, but we just don't want to remember that we have to do it all the time. I, I, I think it makes right. sense to just say compliant, as long as it complies with state regulations. Mm -hmm. Mike, what does he say? That sounds good. Yes, Mike. The only local bylaw is our fire department access, so the key box, which would be part of their security system. So it either goes to the fire alarm, so that would be the only local responsibility. Okay. Yeah, let's just keep okay. it that way. Yeah, there. Okay. So, we, so we simply, we'll, we'll put the right words there, simply shall comply with state regs and get rid of most of this paragraph to take the burden of approval off of you guys and the police chief. If it's, if it's complying with state regs, I mean, you'll know about it. I'm sure you'll be involved in that kind of stuff. Okay. That, yes. Yes, ma'am. Um, in terms of lighting, the zoning board still, or the planning your board still has jurisdiction over uh, what's in these bylaws currently for lighting uh, requirements. Yes. In terms of shielding and protecting. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that's that's different. That's separate. Well, it's yeah. tied in with security, but very, very loosely. <coughs> okay. It's more like we're, we're, I don't think we're as concerned about security lighting because usually that's minimal. We're more concerned about the grow lighting of a greenhouse or something like that. Typically, any building that will be set far enough away, any security lighting they have is usually downward cast and everything else, and it's usually pretty unobtrusive to a neighbor, usually. Okay, but we do have con we do have control over but that. The to your We're more here. concerned with the greenhouse that is not some little light that this big, but you know. We, well, you know what I'm talking about. That's what we're trying to avoid is the overly, you know, something that's eight miles away and we can see what it looks like. So having said that, if there were a specific state law or regulation that said you must have at least 150 watt bulbs, you have to have 150 watt bulbs. Right. Our zoning does not, our zoning is at the town level. It does not supersede state regulations or state law. Yeah. So if, it, if there is a specific requirement, not you know, someone could offer to put 150 in, but if the regulations don't require it, then they have to put in what we say. Yeah. If the regulations require it, regulations win. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and correct. Yeah, we, we, we can't override state law, but I don't, excuse me, I believe most of security lighting is just, it, it's the kind of general, like adequate security lighting and as needed for whatever you're going to be putting in. I don't you know, know the exact words on that. But usually the state is kind of very open-ended, usually, again. Okay, other questions or concerns? Well, yes. also too, Jim, this thing is, is set of operations from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., correct? That's for the retail sales. Right. Right, yeah. And the growing is Because the growing, is uh, open ended? I mean, well, the growing, I mean, you're, you're growing 24 hours a day, seven days a week, so mm -hmm. it's not like we can say you can't do this at certain hours. Right. Okay. But from what most growing facilities run, they run a typical um, eight or 10 hour shift during the day. They, they don't really need anybody there at night because everything is all controlled by some kind of a timer or a computer for yeah. lights on and off. As long as no light gets out, we don't care. Right. Yeah. Jim. Uh, yes. This doesn't have to do with the bylaw and, and 
in particular, but what you said earlier that a, a uh, paralegal got into this document and decided to make all these changes, when in fact these changes weren't necessary because Koppelman and Page had recommended those changes previously. I really don't think we should pay for that. Well, the town has to get to the point where they start looking at bills, questioning the bills that they're getting, and if, and if we haven't gotten the proper services, we shouldn't pay them. And I think we've got to start make a stand right here. Well, I, we, I, we I don't, don't want to that, Mike. Yeah, well, let's, let, let's take a look at the bill and see if who this woman was Mike, and whether, the, yeah. whether there were billable bill hours. Okay, we're in a public then, hearing on the adoption of a file. Yeah, and you, and that was, was brought up at the beginning of this. Okay? And, and there was minimal, there were only two examples of that on that very, very minor time consuming in my, my problem. Oh, so that, okay. you, what you're saying, the paralegal just overviewed it and then just added here and there. Is that what you're saying? I have no idea what you just said, overviewed it. Oh, looked over the whole thing and just marked it up here and there. Not Someone no. from Copeland and Page reviewed the document, yeah. the latest draft, and made comments on it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so if a paralegal is charging, say, 500 as opposed to 800 for the lawyer and they got a half a pound. We don't have well, any idea. I, I'm just telling you, the town has to start looking yeah. at these things. We don't know them. I mean, I mean, I don't know. I mean, that's up above and beyond what we're doing here. We want to get through not the bylaws. Not if we get a bill. Not if the town gets a bill for it. It's our responsibility to make sure that we're controlling the expenses, I think. Okay. So noted. Yes, sir. Um, first of all, I would like to second what Mr. Dwyer had to say about the, uh, his, his speech at the town meeting about the, be the wild west if no bylaw is, uh, is passed. We really have to try to get the word out on that. I don't know quite how to do that, but I think that's going to be crucial. Well, we've, we've been, we have said that almost at the time we've had right. and, this and, been on and TV. the 40 and 50 people here yeah. all heard it. Right, and we are on TV Some where TV. it gets around, and Mr. Dwyer will make that speech on town meeting floor Good. so that everybody understands that, yeah. and there will probably be some questions on it, I'm sure. I'd be surprised if there isn't. Um, but, like Mr. Dwyer says, it, it is, this is yeah. not a voted down and we don't have to do anything on it. It's voted down and we're in deep doodle. That's why we have put... We have, this has come to the town, I want to say this is the third time, um, both other times, or at least maybe the second time. Well, I just wanted to make that comment and second yep. his uh, comments on that. One other point that I think, you've, I think you've overlooked that I don't want it to be a sticky point at the town meeting is on the, the matrix for the zoning districts, and that is that for marijuana cultivated two and marijuana cultivated three, uh, for two it says two to six, for three it says two to eleven. Well, you mean tier one? Tier, the tier, tiers two to six for marijuana cultivated two and tiers two to eleven. Right. Uh, right. The only difference is that um, for marijuana cultivated two, tiers two to six, you want those to be allowed in the business zone district, but not um, for for seven to eleven. For marijuana cultivated three, so I think marijuana cultivated three should say T is seven to eleven. No, because I, well, what we could do because what you're saying with marijuana cultivated two, if that's tier two through six, you're saying that it is allowed in the business district. No, and the very next no, line. No, no, tier cultivated two was allowed two through six in the business zone and the industrial <coughs> zone. Yes. And if you're in the industrial zone, cultivator three is allowed. So what we should do Correct. is in cultivator two, take that out of the industrial zone so that only two through six is allowed in a business district. Correct. And two through 11 is allowed in the industrial district. In uh, in the business, and not in, uh, in you can't allow seven through eleven in the in, in the business district. Mm -hmm. In other words, take cross out that one, so and that one's there, and that one's there. But I <coughs> I think it's all right. I think it's okay the way it is, you, you because in the industrial zone, it's a progression. It's a progression exactly. In 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 the industrial zone, for cultivated two, you allow two through six. To and the people in the audience, correct. Probably, uh, and and if you're in the tier one is how much, or tier two? Tier, five, tier, tier, one. tier, tier one is five thousand square feet or less. That's that's a tobacco barrier. That's what's right. going to be allowed. Right. In the, but if somebody comes in with a request at tier two, yes, then you're saying it's not allowed in the business district. No, usually. No. 
No, the line, the line the line above says that it is. Well, but the line below says it's not. That. That's two to eleven. Yes. Usually. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. It should be six to eleven, no? Not. Seven to oh, okay. Seven, it, it, yeah. they, I see they contradict each other. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I wouldn't want something, something small like that to. So we could either cross this out, Bill, or put seven through eleven here. Which one? Seven better? to eleven will be easier, wouldn't it? I see what so they're saying. We just see well, you sometimes we yeah. okay. no, 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 progression no, though. What's yeah. allowed in the residential district? Right, 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 Okay, I, 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 I see your point. That in one, in cultivator two, you said two through six is allowed. So where is, where are we getting the cultivator one, two, and three? That's not in the definitions. It just says marijuana yeah. cultivator. No, but it's in the matrix. It's in the matrix. I, I see that. Tier one. Yes, we don't, we don't need, we don't need any definitions. No, I know, I just. Uh, I put that in at our last change so that we could clarify cultivator one yeah. is allowed in all zones with special permits yeah. but that's up to 5,000 if you're over 5,000 you're only going to be in the business or industrial zones okay okay so so they make that 7 to 11 that should be 7 to 11 okay I got you. But, but is that footnoted because to, to Bill's point it's it's not defined. It doesn't have to be defined. So, tier 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 one so or two tier through one through eleven is defined in the regulation. Well, it's sort of defined in the matrix itself. So, yeah. yeah. But you so, don't. So you're changing the two to a seven. So, may I suggest we just delete cultivator one, cultivator two, cultivator three, and just go with the tiers. So tier one, two through eleven, or seven through eleven, and two through six. Okay, so get rid of just leave, leave so all of marijuana cultivators. Just mar they're all marijuana cultivators. Okay, tier one, tier two through six, and tier seven through eleven. Okay, we could do that. Yep, that's fine. So, so, you're, so you're gonna cross this out, Jimmy? No, no, we're gonna cross yeah, out. Yes. Numbers. We're gonna cross yes. out one, two, and three. Yes. Just the, just the numbers one, two, and three. Yep. And, and then and then on this one's two through under. Two to six. Under this one's going to be seven to eleven. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. No, well, thank you for that because you, by being an intuition, you're right. It was. It was. A, it was. It says two different things. Okay. Uh, I, I want. <laughs> this is more out of curiosity than anything else. Yes. Uh, in the in the prior version of this. There was a 30.4.2.6, and it had to do with security lighting is discouraged, blah, 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 blah. Right, and, 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 Tom, and to that Tom, came in, and I don't know where it came from, and then it was gone. I don't we, know where it we, we, we put that in in one of our talks about security lighting, that if, if you're secu your regular lighting is okay, but security lighting is okay, but if your exterior lighting or something like that, I forget the exact wording, and town council crossed out and says get rid of this section. Why? I sort of like that. Yeah. Well, let me see if I can see why she said that. Well, let's talk about that. It may be contradictory. That's a possibility. You're saying lighting, and that's you. Know, we don't want any oh. lighting shown. We're talking about uh, security lighting is discouraged in the agricultural residential district, but if installed, structure setback. 30.4 point is changed to 1500 feet. State regulation says that video cameras in all areas that may contain marijuana shall have video cameras and that includes lighting for normal usage, for normal lighting of the cameras. So she says that's a direct conflict to state law, to the state regs. <coughs> because we're saying if you put, the, if you put lighting in, you've got to be set much further back. So security lighting is discouraged, and the state is saying security lighting is required. So that would effectively change the setback from 300 feet to 1,500 feet. If we went with that, however... That's why I like it. Yes, however, 
They also commented on our, I think we have a 300 and a 500 foot setback. Mm -hmm. yes. And they commented that this could be, depending on your layout of your zones and your property, this, if it's too restrictive, it could be considered a prohibition and a state attorney general would throw it out. So forget the 1500. Right. <laughs> By keeping, that's why we were very much okay. All right. well, going through sense. the 300 to 500 throughout yeah. because we know from looking at the, the numbers are consistent with what we have for medical marijuana and they don't, they are, we can show that they're not overly restrictive. If we were to go to 1,000 or 1,500 feet, that would not be the case. Okay. Yeah. okay. That, that, I understand that. Good question. No, that's fine. Yes, ma'am. Um, I also want to echo the, the feelings of um, Mr. Adams and, and Mr. Dwyer for support of this bylaw, certainly. Um, I also just have a curiosity as to why a few things were taken out from the previous edition that came out. Um, sure. Go ahead. The under the host community agreement, um, it was the end of the sentence um, setting forth additional positions. Where, where, where are you again? Hosting, the um, Definition. definitions for host community agreement on page three. Okay. Uh, um, well, it was on page three. Yeah. Um, the sentence now ends with and a municipality and you took out setting forth additional conditions for the operation of a marijuana establishment including stipulations of responsibility between parties and up to a three percent community impact yep. fee the, the town council recommended deleting that sentence that part of the sentence um it's so not a zoning issue right not the zoning issue okay and then um so if there's a community impact fee, town meeting has to vote it in? We've already, re we already voted in the impact fee. Okay, so it's covered elsewhere? Yes. Okay, that's fine. And then um, at the bottom of that page, marijuana establishment, um, the last sentence of what was back on the... Marijuana establishment permitted in accordance with these regulations because it would be commercial right. and or manufacturing. And I wonder why that right. was taken out. The, the comment from town council is the sentence is unclear. The law law now exp expressly provides that marijuana establishments are not entitled to an agricultural exemption under general laws chapter 48. Yada yada. Right. Do you mean to state that the cultivation of marijuana shall be not be considered an agricultural under the town? Shall not be considered agricultural under the town's zoning bylaw. If so, I, re I recommend so, stay, so saying in the definition of marijuana cultivation. And if it says it in the state regulations, okay. basically we just took it out. Okay. Okay. Because the state overrides the local. Right. That's fine. Okay. Just, just one. No, that's fine. That. Thank you. That's it. I think that's it okay. for me. Okay. Anything else from anybody? How do we recognize hemp, or is that out of our control? That Several it, farmers. That's farmers. recognized as an agricultural crop, as far as I know. And it's not part of the Cannabis Control Commission. No. But there are, there are some strange regulations on it. I don't know exactly because I don't want to, I'm just going to tell you what I've seen. If you know where Five Corners is in Granby, on 202, there's a Cumberland Farms and a store. As you drive down, I think it's either East Street or West Street going toward Ludlow. You drive about a half a mile and there's a fence on the right hand side of the road and there's three signs that says this is a hemp field. And there's signs on about being under regulation of the Massachusetts Agricultural Commission. I never stopped to read the whole sign because it's about that word is gonna be, it looks like a paragraph. But it's all about growing, and they're growing hemp in that field, which I never knew. And it's labeled as a hemp growing field. So it falls under some regulation somewhere under Massachusetts agriculture, but I don't know what it is. I didn't well, bother looking. Certainly the amount of whatever the, in, the, the potent ingredient, what is the THC or whatever it is, the state measures it. Right. But be aware that there may be some growing in your neighborhood and that is not something that we would have control over. Yeah. Well, there is hemp growing, being grown currently in Hadley's. It was last year in a couple of places. I know that for a fact. And Waitley is so growing. I've been told a certain farm is going to grow 20 acres. Okay. 
So I okay. wait for a motion. Yes. I okay. will make a motion to recommend approval of the adult use uh, cannabis bylaw to annual town meeting. Second. Okay. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. I want to thank the neighbors for participating. Yes. This is truly a work of uh, participatory democracy in action. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You're, you're once again, it, it's a balance between the rights of the individual landowner and the rights of the neighbors or the citizens of the community. So it is a delicate balance, and thank you for helping us. Yeah, and, you're, and you're, then also it's the neighbors help to bring this out to other people. So that's, yeah. Yeah. that's your 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 input has put a lot of well, <coughs> I mean, we made a lot of change because of your input. Well, we appreciate your patience. With well, we, we want it right. I mean, we, it's not we, um, by no means is this bylaw idea. We're not going to even attempt to say it is. There's going to be some amendments down the road for sure, but we're trying to get something that's at least very workable for the town and the farmers and anybody else involved in the beginning so that we don't have a disaster from the get-go. Thank you. Okay, now on with the fire station. Uh, well, before you begin, I've been advised by uh, the uh, Ethics Commission in Boston that I have to recuse myself because I'm a, a butter to this property. Uh, subsequently to my fir set first call there, I have been told that I may participate, however, in any discussion as it pertains to my property as a citizen. I have. So you're a citizen now? Finally he made it. Perfect life. Congratulations. <laughs> While well, they're getting set up, I know one of the issues on the, was drainage. I will just read the letter from the Board of Selectmen that we received from our from, since our other meeting. Um, this letter comes to see to the to the planning board. What's the date of that? Uh, the date is March seventh. The letter this letter confirms the vote of the board of, of the select board taken on the March 6, two thousand nineteen meeting, in which the board discussed drainage issues for the proposed Hadley Fire substation. The board discussed this matter at length and received advice from civil engineers, the fire chief, and the DPW director. Under discussion were one, the overflow drainage system to the connected to be connected to the town storm water drainage system, two, maintenance of the proposed retention basin, and three, drainage at the front of the building that leads to River Drive. After extensive discussion, the select board determined that the proposed fire substation is a municipal building and that the board and the board determined that on a case-by-case -case basis the characteristics of the site warranted an exception from the general rule of not allowing developers to tie into the town's storm water drainage system the board voted that the drainage system be allowed to tie into the town's storm water system drainage system and further that the general construction bid includes a proposed retention basin and associated associated drainage in the base bid but to list as an alternate underground retention and drainage system. The board voted 4-0-1 in favor. Thank you for attention for your attention. If you need anything further, please let me know. David Nixon, Town Administrator. Okay. Good evening. My name Good is Carlos Nieto from the Berkshire Design Group. Um, we are presenting um, the plan uh, for the fire station. And there were, on the previous uh, hearing, we had four questions that were kind of left um, or items that uh, the board wanted to us to approach. Um, and I'm going to go in order here. For the first one was the noise and decibel, decibel uh, diagram. We were requested to show um, there is some equipment on the back of the uh, fire station being a generator and a mechanical condenser. Um, and it was requested for us to show what the decibel levels were would be at the butter um, property. So that's what we're showing here. We were showing that the distance between it's over 260 feet to the abutters property and then that the estimated sound uh, pressure level at the property line would be 35 decibels uh, at that point. Um, I don't know if that's what you were requesting, just how, what okay. uh, the uh, sound pressure was going to be at the, uh, at the property line. The second um, item was in regards to the planting. Um, the abutter had requested in the public hearing 
um, to show uh, larger arborvitae, and the board uh, requested the same, to show more larger arborvitae along the edge of the property, uh, better serving to um, buffer the neighbor. So the neighbor we're talking about is right here. And as you can see, we've planted the arborvitae right along uh, that line so that it prevents any, any views from the from that property into the fire station. This is a more of a, a detailed view. Um, so we've we've um, answered that or, or, or acknowledged that question. Uh, how long is that line now of our variety? Um, I would say around 200 feet of the yeah. variety. How tall are the trees going to be when you put them in? Um, I believe I have asked for six foot high variety so that they're you know fairly high and they're fast growing. Okay, is that? On top of the knoll, or it's, some of it is going to be on top of the knoll. Some of it because the knoll has a, a you know, uh, not a regular shape. Right. So some of them will go up and then they will okay. go down. So it'll be a little lower here, higher in the middle, and starts okay. to peer down on the back. Okay, but it will be along that that same knoll. Um, the third request was in regards to a turnaround, so that there was uh, show that the uh, fire trucks could uh, or, or show some type of turnaround that would provide the fire trucks for them to be able to uh, turn around without having to back up on 47 and what we've uh, we've changed the plan in a way that now we have our uh, public entrance and this is still the bay entrance to the fire station um, we've provided a turnaround where a, the truck would come all the way through come back and then they could back up into the fire station. Okay. We've done a, a turning radius just to make sure that this, the radius has worked for that movement. So we've shown that they, they would work for that movement. Um, and also works really well for us in the sense that we've increased, we have barely increased the amount of parity surface by doing it this way because it was part of an area that was already paved originally. So we'll be only added a very small amount of paving. Um, and also also works with the drainage system because anything farther this way would, would have been harder for us to uh, manage with the drainage system. So that's the uh, uh, turnaround concept that we that we are going to be proposing. Can the truck make a radius from the station right around into that? So they would go. The movement would be going head first here. Can they and go, then backing up? Can they go that way if they want? The other way, no, they can't. No. The building is too close. So if the no. you know they have to go out. Okay. The, the way that we have proposed originally. And then the last item was the letter from the select board, which you've read. So, and, and so I had a copy, but of course you had one of those, um, which talked about the overflow for the drainage system. In addition to that, in that letter, there was a request from the uh, select board to add an al alternate of an underground system for, and we've also uh, done that. So the you're looking at the base bit, and, and this would be the... Uh, alternate uh, four, so it would have an underground system, and then instead of not having any catch basins like we have before, where we have basically sheet flow, which went to a depression, um, now we would have one, two, two catch basins, one uh, stormwater uh, treatment chamber, and then a system underground system for the uh, stormwater. So what? What are we going to have now? Are we going to have a retention pond or underwater storage? So you're going to have uh, a, a base bed that has a <coughs> infiltration pond and an alternate, an alternate, uh, add alternate. I'll explain that. Yeah. So, so, so our base bed is what you guys have previously seen. So when we say add alternate, in our bid docs, we're going to show this add alternate scope of work, the underground system. If the bids come in under budget to a dollar amount we are, uh, the town okay. sees that they can afford the increase in cost for that at all if the town wants to do it. Because it seems contradictory in the statement as as a, uh, put the list as an alternate. And right. Whereas reading the letter of the minutes of the highway department chief who is supposedly uh, he does not like the retention pond, and he, he proposed the underground stormwater basin. So it's my assumption that the selectmen have over overridden the recommendation of the, the town think, highway chief. I think he was at that select board meeting. I would say that, no, but right. Well, I mean, the minutes here, it says the, his preference is for an underground right. uh, stormwater basin. Yep, yep. But only if cost permits. I mean, it is, it is, 
it will be a more expensive system when we are on a fixed budget. So only if the budget permits will we be able to achieve the underground system the DPW chief would prefer. Our, our latest, so, uh, yes. so we're talking budgetary concerns, not what's best for the site. Well, well I'm going to think of both. One, one quick thing that I wanted to clarify, both systems are meeting all regulations. All no. systems are BMPs. No. They're best management practices plus the above ground system is actually what the bylaw requires us to do. No. I disagree with you. No. Okay. I just really. Okay. And the biggest problem I have with you oh, is okay. the line that goes to the alpha that okay. you're tying in. That line and the lines to the south and to the north were put in there before 1952. The lines are rotted. In 1974, they replaced the south and right after to the north, and it's all the same vintage. Okay. I personally went out there to look at that and talk to the people about flows and what, and they don't see no water running out there. So it tells me that those pipes out there are rotten. And the only way you could check those pipes is to camera those pipes through, and no one did that. Did you physically go follow that pipe all the way down to the outfall to the pond? No, we did, we did not. We I checked did that. the exact uh, catch basin there. We did <clears> do. Um, I did that. Uh, a revi we, we revised or I went we looked the, at the inverts in there, but yes, we did not go all the way. To I the went line. to the state because the state in the chapter 90 mm -hmm. has designed and done things, but after a period of time, they get rid of all that, so that's all gone. Mm -hmm. I went to uh, Time Bond because they did the original water and they did the sewer and they may have in their ar archives the total design of that. Okay. Town of Hadley has nothing, only the date that it shows on 1955 prior because that water line was there. And it's noted by the previous uh, DPW director, Michael Komoski and Pipchinski that those pipes are rotted. Okay. And you guys are dumping water in something that is unclear. I've talked to the guy in Boston, the uh, Springfield recommended him, and I explained that to him about the shear runoff, and if there's, a, there's no oil sp uh, separator, you said there was a grass one. He kind of laughed at that. And I, I just, when you said that to me, it just struck me totally wrong. In the library, in the senior center, you got an oil separator, you got a, a sediment separator, and then it goes into the chambers. The better chambers are the ones that embedded with stone, not Title V, because when I went further, I went to talk to people that maintain these. Mm -hmm. And the best chambers is the stone one. And what that, with the perk, the high perk on that partial, there probably would be, with that underground, no water running into those pipes right now. And when I looked at this whole project, the planning board turns around with us. They look at the whole thing, not just the spot. The selectmen, as far as I'm concerned, failed the town meeting of not looking and doing the whole, where we, we buy, we're going to buy a piece of land, we're going to put all this water. Are we going to worry about it after? That's exactly what happened. You know, you can look at each other. No, I'm, but but yeah. I'm, I'm really concerned about it. And the aftershock and the taxes that it's going to cost the people in this community by haste makes waste. And they did the same thing with the ATZ report. You just took one little patch and that's what you tested for contaminant soil. Instead of buying it at, at the, in good faith, at the seller's responsibility to inspect and sell you the town to have the clean bill of health. The taxpayers paid $9,000 to test those soils for that. This project, I mean, I spent a lot of hours on it. I was on original committee, I supported this. And then I got a notice from the chairman of the uh, selectman that they're moving in a different direction. And I thought what they meant by that, according to one selectman that was there, 
that they're moving to a full-time department and they can do it. So I just didn't bother with nothing. But then when I found out they did this, then it was came from here to the location. I went to go get the minutes. And this is the $3.7 million project. How do you justify 10 hours in committee meeting to come up with all the answers for this project? It just To me, it just stumble over stumble. No one could tell me how that ended up there. And it was a question to this board when you first walked in. You guys came in here, you threw the application on a table, like everybody else comes in here and pay attention to them. They come in here, they ask this board, what do we need to do? How do we need to do? Never mind design all this. You're at what, 90% design, construction design? 80, yeah, 80%. Right. Yeah. Why didn't you come in before? We had a committee before. We had the electrical inspector. We had plumbers on it. We had everything we had, and we had zero budget from the selectman. We had a professional estimator, Franco Quadro. So we come as close as we could. This didn't happen here. And then when it was time for me to, to talk to that guy over there, Mr. Palumbo, that selectman shut it off. Mr. Mishkowski, stick with the zoning stuff, no. The, fir the first thing, we're good. Now you're getting way off track. No, okay. I don't think so. Now, the underground system, you have a settling chamber and an oil separator system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. can, I, can I speak to the drainage? Yes. Yeah. Um, Mark Brownberg designed the lower solid drainage design on the project. Okay. Um, I'll just go with this one here. It's easier. There, we designed two separate drainage scenarios. One, we had a retention basin, surface retention basin, yep. about nine inches deep when it was full. And just think about the concept of the way engineers design projects. We analyze how the drainage works on this existing site. And then after we design it, we want to make sure that several things happen. One, that there's no additional flows after construction than before construction. That's why we put these structures in here. The surface detention system was designed to show that there it held the water, infiltrated a certain portion of it, and when it exceeded that capacity, it was tied into the existing system. Okay. Before this pipe was constructed as it sits now, when you get a significant <coughs> rainfall, there's not a lot of water, but there is water, and she flows off of here, winds up in the road, and into the catch basin. That's a lay of the land, water falls on it, it falls on And okay. our job was to make sure that after it was constructed, that same situation would happen. So that system worked. As far as the pavement, we had a sheet flowing here. Once it gets to the edge of the pavement, it travels over land, over grass, which tends to stop the sediments. It traps oils. We're not anticipating tons of oil here, but the, the uh, oil from parked cars. But meeting DEP guidelines for treatment for uh, suspended solids after travels a specific distance, sheet flows over grass, it cleans up the water before it gets to this infiltration basin where the infiltration is the ground. And even when it gets there, the ground itself further treats the water before it gets to the groundwater. So that complied with standard for engineering, for DP, floor mortar stein, design criteria, and that system works just fine. The alternate system is an underground system. In that situation, we have to collect the water from the pavement. We add drainage structures, catch basins, which people see, collected in pipes, and we put it into an underground pipe and stone system. Before we do that, because the, uh, the um, oils, et cetera, don't have an opportunity to travel over grass and go into the surface and transpose through the water, through the soil for treatment, we put a moist stormwater treatment chamber in there. It traps the sediments from the pavement, traps some of the oils before we send it into this underground system where it holds it, allows it to infiltrate in the ground. The system is a lot closer to groundwater, so it doesn't infiltrate as fast, um, but it does infiltrate, meets all state standards for its criteria. When it exceeds its capacity, again, we have the water discharging to this catch basin, to the street, at the same rate it was prior to construction. Both systems work, both of them address uh, peak flows, volume of flow, and water quality, which was you know, our objective here. So. They're both acceptable um, systems. 
um, that you know okay. we, we trained them and okay. designed them to question, function correctly. In both Hatch Mott McDonald reports, okay. they said that the stormwater management system must be designed to remove 80 percent of the average annual post development load of suspended solids. This is not fully met by the project design, and that's for both the chamber system and the above ground system. And what they're uh, what we claim was an exception for just this driveway, um, all the drainage inside the actual driveway goes to another separate system and gets collected and goes to a tank. But it was only this driveway because of the slope that we had. Um, it was really hard to get uh, a catch basin and slow down that water and put it into oh, so, so it, that's separate. Only, so that's referring to the, the driveway in front of the driveway <laughs> portion. Because the yeah. All the water that's collected is treated to 80%. That's okay. Carl's, that's because the sheet runoff if it's underground, then you can lower that. What is the what is the ground uh, water table there in that whole site? It's more than ten feet, about ten feet down. Right. So you, the code is two feet above two the ground. Bottom of the system has to be at least two feet above the ground water. Right. And when I talked to Bill Olsley from uh, Matt Mom, McDonald. He, he gives this peer review only for the information that you supply. He doesn't know nothing. I asked him about that the discharge line. He knows nothing about it. Neither do you guys. Right. We designed it to meet existing. We did not in, investigate right. and go uh, determine what the existing infrastructure is in the rest so of the town. So then if it fails, it backs up, that means come back to the taxpayer, let's build a whole new line instead of doing this the right way. This should have been done up front the right way. If, if this Our senior center in the, in, the, in the library did that the right day. It was an updated uh, 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 storm system, stormwater system in there, and I went to even to state because I thought it was the state, and they said, oh no, it was kind of Hadley. So they got their underwater uh, detentions and everything else there, and that's going to work perfect. And this, to me, is just not right. And I, I cannot, because what you said, Carlos, about if there's oil spill or what, I don't want to see no gas, no oil, going into that lake water. Mm -hmm. And that's because gas and oil floats on top, and that's where the heck it's going to end up. I cannot... And even, the, even DEP, they said... They prefer all this underground to reperk the system. And really, if you stop and think of all the flooding that's happening all over the place, they put this water so it perks back into the ground instead of just both of these systems do that. Running off. Both of these systems put the same amount of water. I know, into but the you, you still no. don't know the runoff. No. The what storm is this designed for? To accommodate, we match it up to the 100 year storm. Okay. We evaluate it again, existing and proposed conditions up to the 100 year storm to show that we don't exceed pre uh, conditions. 100 year storm, I will tell you right now, the system will probably be overtaxed, whether this is built or not. Yeah. But after this is built, it won't be any more overtaxed than it would be today. But right now, too, Mark, the neighbor to the south complains every time there's a she, and especially sheer runoff, everything's frozen, everything's surface, nothing's, nothing perks. Underground, if it's frozen up top, it perks below. Is that correct statement or not? Yes, it is. Right. So in the sheer runoff, you could have backup because of that trunk line, you could have a major problem with those basins would fill because he has the neighbor to the south, he has his whole driveway all flooded. And this, so, is, this may not change that. Huh? This may not change That's that. You, the you, underground you, wood. I probably, take probably a not. lot out of it. I, 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 Again, I, the, the, uh, we're talking overflows. Yeah. This is not every bit of water goes in here and runs right. down there. Yeah. I, 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 we I'm have not, a system to accommodate yeah. and hold it, and then in the overflow yeah. scenarios. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm, I'm not sure it would have much of a change in the overflow situation. I'm not sure it would have much of an effect on a south neighbor, no matter what system you put in here. Mm -hmm. Right. Because you're so he's probably 300 feet away from you. You stop. But the, the, the underground system you're is stop and sheer runoff. The underground system, yeah, is, in my opinion, is a much better system. Right. You had a question, Mr. Yeah, Mike Sarzinski. I'm the property owner to the west, where you've got the perennial 
stream depicted? Yep. What about runoff in that direction? There's a bank and it's a sheer drop down to the brook. From here, it dropped down this way, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Again, all the pavement, all the de developed area here is collected and directed here. We Again, we have a traffic, uh, a drainage analysis which shows that you know, most of this water goes here today. And the entire paved surface, all the roof water, et cetera, is directed. But the town now owns the whole piece to the brow right. where, where I own. Correct. That's correct. Yeah. And the existing drainage will be the existing drainage. You know, any future development is just like any project anywhere else. When it comes time to do that development design, it's responsibility of the designer and the developer yeah. to make sure we're not causing any detrimental. So there would have to be an appropriate system design for whatever project is built on this. I'm just concerned that that's, that stream flows in the Conecuh River, which flows into Long Island Sound, which is what MS4 four is all about. Right. Oh, yeah. We saw that. You know, yeah. MS4 is no matter which, everything ultimately winds up in yeah. the Connecticut yeah. River. Yeah. Whether it goes to Lake Warner or not, it winds yeah. up uh, going yeah. to. The Connecticut, the Connecticut River is the is the MS4 trigger here, not the right. Long Island Sound. The Connecticut River is considered the federal waterway. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea what any? Not not a good question for it. Put you on the spot too much. But does this Lake Warner do they have any long range plan for the rest of the site? Ideas what could go there? Not at this point, no. Okay. So. That's quite obvious. Okay. Um, other comments on the board? So basically, the select board overruled the the, uh, the highway chief. Okay. So that's yeah. That's, so that's well, they they changed their policy. Correct. So we we have been, we have been carrying out. The express policy of the select board is no tie-ins. Right. The select board has changed that policy. For this particular project, this particular as far project. as going into the town drainage system. Now, what's what would be the additional cost, though? Just what are we talking about for numbers? Uh, if we put the underground filtration system in? Um, I'm probably looking at 150 k plus or minus. 150 Where do you get that figure from? Uh, just past estimates. We haven't we haven't estimated that that scope. No, just just for the planning board's information, the planning board has the authority to require the underground system if we desire. Yeah. And there's another thing I have a problem with. Under our bylaw, adopted in 52206 and amended in 1118. The Board of Health is the authority on stormwater runoff, not the selectmen. My question is, why weren't they contacted to look at this, to understand this, but just circumvent it, and the selectmen just turn around and try to rubber stamp something? And it's not only this. I heard that they, they want to do away with a grease trap, too. You know, it just... That really bothers the heck out of me. It really does. So what I don't that? think they know what the heck they're doing there. What, what is that bylaw you're referring to, John? What's right the here. Number on it? That's the general. Oh, what's it called? 190. Yeah. Okay. Right. Section 195. The so that is not with the detention basin. There's not going to be any grease traps or anything. No. It's the grass. I get from two two questions. Grease trap is for. Kitchen flows and the sanitary sewer. Right. Okay. That's separate. Yeah, I think uh, John was talking about uh, oil and from drips from vehicles. Okay. Right. Traveling to the other kitchen? Is there going to be a kitchen there? Yeah. Yes, the Wait, kitchen it's... consists of a residential stove yeah. and a single compartment sink. A dishwasher there? No. No. So kitchens don't need grease packs or do they need grease packs? Yes, they do. According to the sewer regulations, they do. So, and a grease trap. What so the select, the, what the selectman the said is right there at a meeting, it was going to cost sixty thousand dollars. Well, I get a price from a installer forty five hundred dollars when you do this during construction, and if you do it off the pavement, you can put a lighter box for heavy trucks not to cave it in. In the proper way, they're going to put a a, a recovery manhole in the front because they're going to wash your trucks in the bay. Yeah, we so, Right? Right here. Right, right. 
So you would put three into a uh, manhole and then into out to the sewer manhole. So then if anything ever plugged up or there was uh, the grease trap or the sediment or the recovery manhole, then it's easy to snake those out, not tie them all together in wise and everything. So, so, so part I'm, of I'm totally in supportive of a grease trap off the pavement in the grass. It, that's all it is, is in line. Here's the pipe here, here's the pipe. I know what those are. And there's, there's the figure. I give you guys a copy of that. $4,500 for it, not $60,000. Do we have authority, that's the question, at this board to require a grease trap? If it's in a sewer regulation, then the selectmen are not going to cir circumvent all these things. If we make well, other businesses do it, then this is a commercial lot, but not a residential. We, we don't make other businesses. Well, do you it. you don't vote for it. I'm not voting for what that. I'm voting for a grease trap and underground but, okay. storage. Yes. Period. The, the, grease, the grease trap was um, not put in because it's not an industrial kitchen. It's the same thing as having a house. Do you require a grease trap in a house? <laughs> We don't require no, no. grease traps. Okay. It's not a zoning issue. So, yes, this, this this sewer does. This sewer does. Is not so, to have so, anything more sewer department regulations. Gentlemen, single, gentlemen, one person one at a time. Sink, I, oh, I a understand. regular refri house refrigerator and a, a small stove in there. There's nothing major going into this kitchen that would require you to have a grease trap. No, it's not true. industrial. I understand not the reason. So that's who, the reason no, that the we... the question is, who, who makes that determination? Wait a minute, one, one person at a time. Well, I was asking that question three I, or you, four times and it still hasn't been answered. Right. That's right, we haven't got to it yet. I'm, we're still trying to, to determine here. I understand the reason for no grease trap out of the kitchen, but shouldn't there be an oil water separator if you're going to be washing trucks? There is, there is one. Oh, there is one. There is one. It's right there. It's called an NBC trap. Oh, so you do have an oil water right. separator. Correct. Yes. Yes. For, for the... Oh, okay. Yeah. For the... For the okay. Base. So there is an oil water separator for washing the vehicles. Yes. Correct. And a maintenance plan to go with it. Yes. Yeah. It's a okay. standard All NBC right. trap. All right. Originally, Jim, when we put this to the original committee, this thing was going to be, if there was a disaster somewhere in town, a tornado, hurricane, that this, they even show a place where they're going to extend that for a warming place for citizens in this town. And to put that in now is the right time. To put it in later is a, probably a 30000 or better uh, cost of doing it. And... I'm going to tell you right now, I am not voting for this if you don't put underground water because I think it's a must. It protects our lake. It, the pipe is unknown. You guys don't know. You shake your head, Joyce, but you don't know nothing about the line. Nothing. And neither do they. And they're the supposed experts. So every project that you've made, you think that we should replace a line, whether it be town building or another building that builds out front that you can't put anything in unless I'm going to I'm going to answer so this to you the selectmen failed big time to maintain our stormwater system the only time they maintain is when the road collapses and the pipe falls in and that track record is proven we have such a problem with all this and nothing's being addressed well, let's rubber stamp this. You may rubber stamp it, but this guy isn't. My question to yes, Mark. Yes, now, now, back to your, your question, Joe. Now, my question to Mark is not that we have the authority to put a grease pack in, I'm not sure, but when Bill writes the reports up and the, the minutes up, uh, it's as other boards as required so, so we don't have the authority but we recognize the other boards that have the authority Correct. my question is who has the authority for the grease trap is the select so, board or is it the board of health so uh, it might be the sewer commissioner whoever's in charge of the sewer system okay makes that determination from my understanding right but it's in they can say what they want but it's in the regulation it's spelled I, out I, in I'm just, I'm, read it. I'm just responding to, to, to um, yeah. but read yeah. the regulation. So there is an oil water separator system. That's the important part that yeah. I'd be concerned about. And the grease trap system is a different item from the oil and water. Right. Okay. All right. Yes, Mike, you got it. Just, just so you, there's clarification that they met with the DPW director to review 
they were looking at a 1500 gallon grease trap for the kitchen. That's a standard size, right? right. For a commercial kitchen, yes. Yeah. As far as the, I also want to make it clear on the warming shelter. Uh, a warming shelter, if we're going to be setting that up to house people, to have them come in and warm up or cool off, or if we had to shelter people, we are not opening a commercial kitchen to prepare meals. That's what the Red Cross comes in for. That's what outside agencies come in to support. Okay. So this is strictly to take care of if down the road in the future there were a couple folks living there and needed to make their breakfast. Okay. So that was the purpose. Okay. Um, another question. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, I'm thankful that they put the, um, the arborvitae there. Yep. But in the um, the other meeting that we were at, I was asking if they could go um, closer to the station so that I could see some of the meadows still. Okay. I, what do you mean? I I thought that I thought you wanted it closer so you would have more yeah, space. Yeah, we we, we, we oh. talked about it the last meeting, putting it closer to the knoll. So that the knoll is going to hide more of the building yeah, from you. That that whole thing is the knoll. It goes, right. The whole thing goes up. But I mean, if it could get in line with like the first or second tree on River Drive, because there's a line. Uh, there's can, a few can you trees go up there? there. Can you go towards the top? We have no idea what you're pointing to. Because okay. right here. It's going to kill the, the few trees that are here anyway. It's going to shade them. But originally, I was thinking right along here. Yeah, we were thinking that's too close to the station in case they want to use that property to the west, to the north of it for something for the town. And too close to the tank. Or yeah. that's also where they're talking about expanding the uh, sta the. In other words, they could expand the right. if they expand the station one bay, one bay is going to be awfully close to the expansion. We're not, we, we, don't, we don't want to hinder any expansion of the building. Could they move it at least to here, to the second tree, so I could still see some of the meadow? I mean, I've looked at this for 30 years. It's part the, of the, the, I'll, I'll be completely honest with you, and this is <laughs> not intended to be a mean statement okay. by any yeah. stretch. Okay. This is the town's property. They have the right to do what they want within right to their property. Right. And it, unfortunately, if it blocks some of your view, that's a that's that is an unfortunate circumstance of them doing what they are legally allowed to do with their property mm -hmm. by putting up the arborvitae they're being as a, as a good neighbor accommodating to block light and other stuff of the building from you and light and probably a lot of noise but to try to be a bit fussy on where exactly the trees are or you want them because of your view of the meadow mm -hmm. we don't have that authority to do that yeah. Because this was all um, deemed unbuildable anyway. No, no it's just, just that there's a no. We, we, we've but, said. I mean, could they move it over a little bit just so that I could see a little bit of that? Do you need it to go okay. back as far as it goes? Um, to, to there is fine. I mean, it goes up fast here. So, I mean, they're going to put the smaller ones up there. But um, just so I can see a little bit of this. I mean, it's closest to my house out of everybody's house in the, yep. in the that, area. That's true. It is. So I'd well, like to a little, see a little bit. Because of, of the divisions of authority here, you really have to talk to them exactly. about it. <laughs> yeah. we, can't, we can't make them do it one way or the other. But uh, they can agree to tweak it a little bit. You can't make who do it? The developer. We cannot tell the developer to put We can tell them to screen the site. But we can't really fine tune it to accommodate neighbors to, to this extent. And yeah. it would be a, a little bit of exceeding our reasonable authority. So what is she asking for? Maybe ten feet. I mean, if they want to. If we you know we could ask them to move them a few feet. But if you're you're talking like twenty or thirty feet, that probably I don't know. It's it's a, a fair request. We'll move them. But we can't. Yeah. 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 We'll move them. What about Dixon? You want to bring that up? How much can you move? Well, it sounds like she just wants to move southerly 10 to 15 feet. By the time they grow anyway, you're not going to have any any blockage by the way arborvitae grows. So eventually, as those arborvitae grow, it's going to block your view anyway. So whether it's 10 feet in or where they are now, it's not going to make too much difference to, I imagine, the select board, whether it's 10 feet in or where they stay. So, Joyce? Yeah. 
I have to bring it back to the select board. But, yeah. I can't, I can't make that decision on my own. Just for clarification, the way they're drawn, they're about 30 feet from the property line. Yeah. As currently. You can show them on the place. other. On the yeah, other on the other drawing. If you look at where your property is. How many feet do you have there from they're right here. from that line mark to where they back to proposed to about put a from which yeah and I pushed them so I pushed these out till they were way beyond the, the trees so because I I don't want them to be on any of the trees but if I mean I think as Phil said if you need to move them time for you can move them Carlos how many feet from where those trees are to the the proposed uh, Place that could be no to the proposed addition for another stall. How many oh, feet is that? Here, here. Uh, I would say two. 180. Well, no, about 180 feet. So what the heck is 10 feet? Yeah, no. What, what, what I'm saying is 10 or 15 feet is probably not an unreasonable thing. Yeah. 50 feet is this, this is the class. I think they're, we're, they're agreeing. Yes, they're yeah, agreeing, agreeing that we can move it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's fine. Right, thank yeah. you. Nope. Okay. <clears throat> Other comments from the board? Anybody in the audience? I get a bunch of comments, but you don't want me to say it. But I'm going to just say this. I had four or five people calling. How can they appeal and repeal this project? Okay. Well that's and I, I said, look it. I'm going to put all these questions on here. And if there's not answered, I'm going to try to answer them as best as I can. So if you don't want to talk about it here, you may get delayed in another way and just well, and, and I, I think according to many of the questions you wanted to ask on that you have asked them and you got in you've asked them no I didn't. you got a, we got satisfactory answers no i didn't part. ask them all i didn't say you asked, asked them all i said you asked a lot of them i know i did and the other ones that i see that you probably want to ask have really nothing to do with the zoning issues so we're going to say i'm going to have to say that you can't ask them then and, and if they appeal it, exactly, that is, is like that's your fault. Okay, oh, my. It, because good, good with that. <clears throat> um, so really, quite it comes down to the drainage system. Do the planning board want to push and say we want the underground system? You I know. do. It, it, it's not a deep retention or detention pond. It's about, what, eight inches, nine, nine inches? Nine inches in overflow. If it were significantly deeper, I would require the underground thing. The only part that bothers me is the fact that our the director of the DPW wanted something in, kind of overruling him. I know. Which is not the proper thing to think we are, or the select board is overruling right. it. Well, yeah. We're, it, we're not overruling. That's him. correct. And uh, so, this but, this is the famous saying in this board: "Not our job." I don't know who the heck's job is it anymore. But so it's, I'll, it's I'll, not a it's not a huge detention pond that would require cattail removal, et cetera, et cetera, and a permit from the conservation commission every other year. So, uh, how, how deep is the pond from the ground level, Mark? The detention basin? Yes. Uh, I believe the, it's about nine inches deep when it's full. Nine inches, yeah. It's just what nine inches deep from the first Correct. ground level. The, the uh, standing water will be nine inches deep. No, that's not my question. From ground level, in other words, on the parking lot. Yes. Go back to the drawing you just had up there. Well, this one, this one, this is the. Okay, that could be the, the, this is the From the paved the area. This detention basin is nine inches below that, no. the bottom of the basin. No. Is no. The, we're talking about from the edge of the parking lot? Yes. Uh, we're dropping down one, two feet. So it has to, to flow down two feet to the pond. Okay. And it's built up so that it would hold water up to nine inches, and after nine inches, it would flow out to here. So the detention basin is nine inches to the bottom of the basin from the surrounding mm -hmm. ground? From the edge of the basin. Right, but from, if you were standing here next to the basin, 
You were stepped down nine inches. Nine, that's so my question. Okay. So if you're a cross section, your basin is nine right. inches. If you, were, if you were walking across here, you were stepped down nine inches. Nine inches into it. Okay. And, and then what do you see on this side here, you continue going up because the ground is higher. I got you. But on the lowest spot, there would be nine inches. But then what he did say here at a meeting in a hundred year flood that that is going to be inadequate. And because again, you guys failed not to look at that pipe, it, it was a clear open and clear and shot. I need to clarify none of the pipes in the roadway systems in Hadley are designed to accommodate 100 year storms. Right. Yes. But, you're saying but now it's even worse because if that pipe is half plugged or half rotted, it's even worse. Correct. That's an existing condition. That's why, no, that's it's, why if there's underground, then it perks. And it perks when the ground is frozen. When the ground is frozen, the water cannot go down. It's sheer runoff. That's the difference. Yes, sir. We began this design following the rules and regulations of the town Hadley. And in their regulations, and this was copied for me, and stormwater runoff 8.8.5.1, where it says that the rate of surface water runoff from the site shall not be increased after construction. Mark has described that. If needed to meet this requirement and to maximize groundwater recharge, increased runoff from impervious surfaces shall be recharged on site by being diverted to vegetated surfaces for infiltration or through use of detention ponds, period. Dry wells shall only be used where other methods are infeasible and shall require oil, grease, and sediment traps to facilitate removal of contaminants. So our original design, which was above ground, was, was uh, in compliance with your directions and your regulations. And the DPW chief directions or preference is contrary to this. So you would need to revise your regulations if that is your preference. Well, Peer when, review when, said different. When the system, when <coughs> I don't disagree, however, MS, we, we have some contradictory points in our bylaw. MS4 contradicts some of our stormwater <coughs> um, Section 8 site plan approval. When site plan approval was written, it hasn't been updated to recognize infiltration system because a lot of times that was. They almost didn't exist when, it's, when site plan approval was created however many years ago. So there is some things that are out of date. I don't disagree with you. Do they contradict each other? Well, that depends if you consider an infiltration system a dry well or not. Do I consider it a dry well? I mean, you can argue those points all day long. We're not going to sit here and do that. Yes, sir? I'd like to ask a question of the designers. Um, how many ad alternates are there on this project? One. One, one, one. Right. So you haven't made this like at ad, ad alternate number three. I, I would just share that with my experience from design that when I put ad alternates into a project, it's to protect the client so that if they want a Chevy with, you know, chrome wheels, I'll say, I'm not sure you can afford the chrome wheels, so we'll give you the steel wheels under the base bit. If you get a good price, then you'll get the chrome wheels. I'm not saying I'm not going to give it to you. I'm protecting you from not getting it at all. And, and that's, that's been my history with, a, with an ad alter. I just wanted to add that perspective. I got I got yes, yes, sir. To, to that point, sir, I don't know who you are, but uh, that's what Boeing argued when they said it's going to cost you a little bit more to make that upgrade, okay? It's going to cost you a little bit more <coughs> to make that upgrade. So I don't think that's a good argument, sorry. Well, I think both wheels will be safe yeah. on the road. Mr. Who, who is this gentleman? I have not stated who he is. I'm or sorry. Him, sir. My name is Mark Dunn. I live in town. I'm not in a butter, but I just am here. Who's this name? That was a support. Okay. That was what we're doing with the I just didn't have the Other comments on the board? What do we want to do? Uh, Suggestions? I don't know. I tell you what I'm in favor of. I'm in favor of the project. They did the road so the trucks don't have to back in, but I'm in favor of the grease trap and that underground uh, storage. I mean, if you're looking for some comments, Jim, I mean, certainly there's enough problems to go around. Number one, 
we have a site, nine acres, and we're putting something right in the middle. The future planning for this site is not well thought out. Uh, number two, certainly the underwater detention is probably a little bit more preferred, but I don't see this as an overwhelming necessity for this particular site because it is eight or nine inches deep. It's not a, a huge maintenance problem. Uh, what about the rest? Of we're in a position of kind of making sure that certain things are done correctly, and uh, you know, Mark has made a a reasonable presentation about the drainage. You know, I I would be probably voting in favor of it if we are if you want to take a straw poll. So what happens to the rest of the site? The rest of the site that's that's a problem, but that's not. It's really I know, not, but every time problem. we do a commercial development, but we look at the whole site. We, we, this is amateur hour. There's no question about but it. Your it's not designed like. It. The professionals would do it, and this is a lesson to all of us. How it ain't a lesson to me things. because I've seen what happened in the previous uh, things. That you look at the whole thing, you you got to be concerned about the whole thing. This, so put I, the blinders on, and just look I at don't this. I disagree with you from that point of view. But, well, uh, you guys can vote for that. I'm not. You know, I think the, the point here is that this is the project that's before us. The question is, does it satisfy the bylaw? And to all intents and purposes, it does, minimally, in some ways, perhaps. Uh, when we ask for a build-out analysis of a site, it's usually with a developer who we know has plans, <coughs> and we make them uh, show their hand. Uh, in this case, we've been told that I have no reason to question it, that there are no other plans for this property right now. And it may end up being uh, rented farmland for. Yeah, don't you believe that? Uh, but what we have in front of us is a project. And just as some, anybody comes in, uh, we look at the project they offer us. We don't redesign it for them. Uh, everybody's expressed their concerns. We've gone through various projects in this system, but uh, yeah, I, I guess I'm uh, okay enough with it. The people who are going to be using it say this is what they want. Uh, I don't have a better opinion on driving fire trucks than the fire chief. So um, I'm, I'm okay with it. Well, what I also say, these guys are not done yet because again, when they flopped into a plan here, on the application, they never come back to this board like other people do, other developers do, over and over. We're here for them. We try to help everybody that comes in here, whether they, they're stumbling over something to try to help them to complete their project. These guys didn't do it. They just went blasted through, did all their construction drawings, and now look at the change orders. Look at this guy over there, he's putting a change order for $50,000. That's why you can't do anything. These guys are low ball, low ball of cost, and then they're, they're, they're full of change orders. I worked for architects, and I worked in a lot of businesses, and I never see nothing like this. Okay. No, this is amateur hour. Okay. <clears throat> well, we're not going to get a quorum tonight. I mean, uh, no. um, with, with a unanimous a vote. majority vote. And yeah, we need uh, four or four. Four, four out of four. So we have uh, the erosion and sediment control and site plan approval. Is there anything else on here? Um, no, they're out of the aquifer. Out of the aquifer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, this would just advertise for erosion and sediment control and... I just copy. Uh, yeah, whatever. I put it. Yeah. No, it is. Yeah. Uh, sediment control and site plan approval. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's what the that's I what I said. Like, again, I support that project but with those two. The add alternate add, add is a base bid and that grease strand. So, so the project needs to do what to get four votes? The project needs to get four votes. Oh, sure. One of the items we needed to change? Well, you got Mr. Mishkowski's grease trap. Okay. And the Not mine, sewer regulation. Sewer regulation with the, the grease trap and the underground drainage system. Right. As the base bit. As a base bit. Yep. And I'll vote for it. 
Yeah, right. You don't even know what you got in for a bid. So you may Five want days. to, someone may want to confirm uh, Mr. Mitchikoski's reading of the sewer regulations as to whether grease traps are required in I, brought, I gave you the regulations right in that uh, grease trap thing. I'm offering them a chance to. They don't. They, they don't read it. That's, okay. the, that's, that's the problem. So. Ask for a continuation. We'll, <laughs> we'll continue. You, well, we can make you under 16. The desk is not going to take. Well, we should take a lot. We have room on it under 16. Do we? Will you be having? You be ready for ready in two weeks from tonight? Yeah. So we already had the peer review done of the add on Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Right. So yeah, there's no more peer review <laughs> required. So are we having a public hearing on the other? Uh, are there are, no are no other zoning articles, are there? No. Okay. No, because uh, what's his name? Well, we don't know that. And if it if it is, it's going to have to be the last Tuesday of the mm -hmm. month, because uh, the. Uh, which am I thinking of? What's that? Elections. No, no, the senior housing. Yes. On the, the request for senior housing on the other side of the bike path was requested to put on hold. And I got to get a hold of. Uh, Ask Dion, he knows about that. Are you going through with that, Donald, that, that senior housing? I got to talk with Barry tomorrow morning. Okay, right. because yeah, they have put it on hold. We have a scheduled no public hearing, so the, the rezoning article has been put on hold, and so we need to know literally tomorrow, so we All can right. get the notices in the newspaper and get the article onto the town warrant. Okay. Yeah, space for you, right? What was that? There's a space for you on the town warrant. Right. No, there's a for space. That, that was by petition. So right. There, there is a space. There for is that. a space, right. and it's, it's 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 in limbo right now. It's on hold. It's what what uh, um, the two attorneys have requested, and I forgot to ask those. And I meant to give an email today to find out what's going on. So would this. that mean you'd, you'd be talking about a, a, a special, special meeting, meeting on the 30th, 30th. because we'll never meet the 16th? Okay. Look, it's a five Tuesday. Well, we could hold it right at the town meeting. Would I, I just I just want to make this perfectly clear to you and to everybody else in here that this project is not out of the woods because it's talk about an appeal or a ten taxpayer lawsuit okay. on this. Story. So you we'll guys continue, do what you want. We'll continue man. the fire station to the sixteenth for the two for the two items, and then we'll find out it's a separate item entirely about the uh, rezone article. Or the, yeah, the uh, petition article for the yeah. end of the month. As long as there's still a placeholder on there, that's fine. Yeah, but the placeholders mostly will be able to hold the public hearings in time. We, we're, we're running up against the time frame on that. That's all. Okay. Now, you talked to uh, Tom Reedy and said, yeah, we can't hold a special. I don't mind holding a special one for you. I said, we, you know, I said, don't wait until it's too late. He knows. So I'm going to remind him. I'll give him an email. Man, well, Donnie's the key man, you know. Oh, yeah, but it's it's a two-way street. <laughs> he needs the other half to agree. Yes, sir. Hi, uh, may I get something in before the meeting adjourns? Sure. All right, great. Uh, are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Um, Might come back up? Yeah, come on back up. Yeah, this is contained to the 16th. Side of the way, so you have to go by. I got it. So your stuff. Oh, oh, yeah. Sorry, I didn't get my name on the list. I went to cross the street. Okay. Um, so we're converting uh, the 185 Russell so, Street building um, to an office. So it was a residential use. We're making an office. Last time we were here. Yeah. Give us your name. For Andrew Bass. Sorry. Yeah. And, uh, and Nick Culver, if you. Give me the uh, address. 185 Russell Street, next to East Hampton Savings Bank. The which one? Uh, oh, the, the, uh, the, 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 the 185 what? Russell Street across from the post office. Tiny Mitch Oh, okay. Oh, oh, Berkey. okay. Tiny Mitch Kosky. Tiny Mitch Kosky. Tiny Mitch Kosky. Yes, okay. Yeah. So we're uh, converting out from residential use to a small law office. Um, last time we were here, we weren't quite sure of the square footage and the yes. need for site plan approval. Yes. Um, I measured it out. Um, with the, as modified as we modify the interior walls, it comes in at 997. Um, What's going to happen with the garage? The garage is staying. We're going to park in it, me and my wife. Um, it's a two-car garage. Um, yeah. Is that part of the business? So, so you're going to live there and run? No, no, no. This is just an office. 
pure commercial, no no residential. So how's how you're using the car the garage to park cars if you're not gonna live there? Well once we go to work we're gonna park in the garage. It's a too deep garage. Yeah. Why why can't you park in it? Oh you can park in it. I'm just saying how do you use it for residential use? When there's no residence there. We don't live not there. Gonna, we turned it into an office already. We're any so, so they don't live there. Right. But they are going to use this as part of their parking. Yeah. For so for the nine ninety seven that means okay. they need call it two thousand square feet of parking. And they'll use that as five million. So he's looking for waiver site plan approval. I don't, I'm not quite sure that we would need it anyway since it's hundred thousand, but we just wanted to get the maybe get the blessing of the planning board, I guess. I mean, there's already four four parking spaces there, basically, on the outside. Um, we're possibly going to add some stone, um, you know, remove some of the grass and add stone. We're not paving anything. We're not making any exterior alterations to the structure or the, the yard or nothing like that, okay. um, besides making it look better. But uh, we do. Yeah. Yeah. There is a concern, and it's not enough concern to scuttle the or under the thousand square feet. Whether it's a second floor or garage, they just happen to convert into more space, and uh, they're using it as uh, business. And we've been trapped so many times, and then there's not enough parking. How come this person got away with it? And this person didn't, but. Uh, sure. I mean, this is all. It, it follows the guidelines of yeah. under a thousand square feet. Yeah. Everything. Everything there's parking. Okay. So if you took that that garage out of it, there's not enough parking. No, if the garage is converted into well, an well, office. He's more worried about converting the garage they get into so part busy of the business use. They have to get, right. They yeah. could. Well, yeah. we made. Um, yeah. You know, all of this is completely unheated, unlivable space out there. I mean, that's. You know, but if you take that garage out, does that make it incomplete for parking? I don't know. No, no. It's no. just the concern is that I'm sure as, the, as, the, the, as the second floor went in where the motorcycle place was, all of a sudden they want to well, put an apartment I mean, up there. If, Joe, if, if they want to and it still complies with the parking, then what's the problem? So if they want to come in and do anything to winterize this they have a, they need a building permit okay and yeah. that, tim okay. would catch it yeah. Yeah. and that would put you over the uh thousand okay. square thousand okay. square feet okay yeah we've already had all our rough inspections yeah. and everything for plumbing and electrical no um, just, so just a okay, i'm sorry yeah no, good that was all i'd say separate topic from you but part of you actually okay it, it, it does pertain to you and everybody else that comes in tim has asked me a while ago can you give a simple form when you have something like this that what you did and give me a copy he says because right now i don't always hear about it except when they come in and he says i'm taking their word of mouth and it gets confusing so i created a very simple form that somebody come in where the where the request is what the meeting was they requested a waiver of something granted denied if denied why and a vote was such and such and either you or i could sign it and approve it okay very simple yeah you want to use this form uh um, yeah, we could. So to simply yes. notify Tim. This yeah, is simply right. to the this, building inspector. He wants notice. That's all. It's yeah, because all yeah. this is about is a notice. Perfect. Just saying, we, we're we're satisfied that this is below the threshold. Right. Whatever. Yeah, okay. Sense. And your name is Andrew Bass. Yes, Andrew Bass. How are you doing? BASS. You, you almost done. B oh yeah. B yeah. Uh, BASS. Yeah, like the fish. 185 Russell. You said. Yep. Yeah, 185 Russell Street. When are you guys supposed to open there? Um. Well, it'll be okay. By the I don't think we need a motion. We just uh, we okay. Just, we've decided. I'm ready. Well, I'll it. make a motion for the record that 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 vote so to allow it. The site plan approval is not needed. Right. You know, it's just the threshold of a yeah. thousand. Okay. Feet. Okay. It was kind of interesting too, actually, when I looked at the bylaw, which I'm going to pull up on my screenshot here. But um, the way that it's written, you know, it says. Uh, 8.2.1 says construction, exterior alteration, or exterior expansion of, or change yes, of use within. Yes. And it doesn't say if you're changing from a residential to business. It says if you're changing a multifamily unit to a different use, but it doesn't actually cover a residential single family yeah. to a different use. Yeah, and, and at the time, that's probably because there's very few places that are doing that. 
Yeah. Okay. But Probably. this is in the business zone. Yeah. So yeah. that's yeah. the understood. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was also in anticipation about what are we going to see down the road, and that just never probably came at the time, you know. Okay. 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 So a motion. To motion a second to agree that it's under a thousand square feet. Site plan approval is not required. With motion a second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Five minutes. Okay. Again, I'll make a copy. I'll give it. I'll put it in Tim's mailbox, and we're all set. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Good luck to you, man. Yes, thank you very much. Business is booming. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Keep smiling, um, right? Just the two of us, though. So well, that's, you know, who has right? headaches? Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. We'll never have any talk about the other. I don't think today. All right. Do anything else? Talk to you. Um, I actually do. Um, okay. A lot of lemon. Anything else? Really? Yeah. Motion to adjourn. So move it. All in favor? Aye. Meeting is history. Thank you, and thank you, John. Yeah, so, you know, Massachusetts has really...